welcome to the live broadcast of the Engadget Podcast. I am Deputy Editor Sherlyn Lowe, and co-hosting with me today is Senior Writer Sam Rutherford. Hey, Sam, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Had a, had a big day uh, yesterday. Oh my gosh, we did. Uh, we had a lot of fun yesterday talking to everyone in the live chat, and we'll talk to you more today. But we are joined by a special guest that I'm just teasing up for, for now. We're also joined by our podcast producer, Ben Elman. Hey, Ben. Hello. Uh, we mentioned we have a, we have a, a special guest that we may or may not show during this time. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you, I want to keep it a guys? secret. Okay, I, I guess. Okay, I mean, okay. When you think Samsung's latest foldables, who do you think of? Let's just say. Uh, so peek over at the live chat right now. Let's see if anyone can drop their guesses in the live chat. A velvety uh, voice, a spicy baritone. <laughs> the, the, the tease is real. <laughs> the, oh boy people are i want to see how how much hype if there is any at all for our special guest i think there is none uh hello to everyone. oh no i think there, there oh no no oh, someone oh, already no, got it got, no okay yeah but we're not going to shout it out you have to read the chat yourself in the but chat we... we've got christoph christoph howard cj by steps d man buddy 305 love drew carmoka jaime avalos kenny holland Dion projection i'll say in high Yes, um, so saying hi, good evening from India. We have good afternoon from Spain. Love to hear where everyone is watching from and what time of day it is. That's just really um, uh, satisfying for me. Also, mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of people have uh, been watching Twitter. So, well, they've uh, also we also did tease this yesterday on the Samsung post show. Mm. Uh, you know, so if. Oh, and we tweeted. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, the, 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 the jigsaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally like um what stay like five movie, minutes ago my friends. Or less? <laughs> mr mobile do you want to say something just why tease people with your votes don't i sure <laughs> it is it is lovely to be here thank you for having me all the way over from okay remember we're not going to uh, this is uh not the actual show quite yet though yes i am going to explain what's going on here but i also want to shout out that mr amar kalbergi Oh, sorry, I didn't say, I didn't mean to say Mr. Amara Kalbergi, one of the YouTube uh, chat members said, Mr. Mobile missed his alarm? <laughs> I mean, I usually do, but not this morning. I didn't, no. <laughs> I'm no, proud I'm of you. I'm actually here. All <laughs> right. Uh, Christopher Howard says that it's 11.02 a.m. in Maine. So yeah, we're both on U.S. East Coast time. Chris, where are you watching from? Just out of curiosity, anywhere in relation to uh, Portland, Maine, Bangor, or you know the hinterlands where the actual um, Stephen King ghoulies tend to live? Um, Hassan Janan Obadi says, "Wow, Mr. Mobile, I've been following you forever. You've got a longtime fan in there since Aww. Pocket now." Oh my God! Thank you. Yeah, that's a long that's, time ago. That's great. Um, yeah, it is. And Appreciate that it. local guy says hi from friends. Victor Mabila says Kenya and Elias Benani says Sweden. Uh, I want to quickly explain what's going on here. This is the behind the scenes and live recording of the Engadget podcast, the audio show that goes out on all podcast platforms. Um, and so you're going to see us record sections. And during those portions, we can't really talk to you. It wouldn't be really fair to the audio uh, show listeners to just engage so much uh, in real time with the live chat. But we will be taking segment breaks during which we can answer your questions, interact with you live like we're doing right now. And uh, we have some gadgets we can play with and answer your questions again, like I said, live. Uh, and also you will probably hear us make some mistakes here and there. We'll go back and do lines again if we if we did them wrong the first time. Might do some research live on air if we are looking for specs and all that good stuff. So uh, have maybe, you know, have a little patience if we're not getting to your questions uh, immediately. And also just drop them while we're chatting because Ben, our producer, is looking at the chat and he will bank them and flag them to us when we have segment breaks. Um, I want to shout out that Cheshire Cat 20302 oh, yeah. says they're in Singapore and it's 11 p.m. Hi, Ni Hao. <laughs> Happy a couple of days away from National Day. Happy National Day from two days ago. Uh, Buddy305 Love is a big fan of Mr. Mobile. Thank you. Thank you very so, much. I'm sorry. I was just looking at what the feed looks like. Speaking of show and tell, I got to go get my show and tell props. So I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Uh, yes. Mobile, do you have your show and tell props? Uh, I, I do, as far as I know. I, Sherlyn, you didn't tell me what to prepare for. You just threw me into the stream <laughs> really here, expected me really to swim. I, I, you know, 
I have some today, props. Today I was very like I did not prepare Mr. Mobile whatsoever. Usually we mm. send out this like long document of like detailing yeah, what to do. This whole essay. Uh, <laughs> this what last... shirt to wear. How to style <laughs> your hair. How to style your hair. But <laughs> This, Not today. This time around, I just texted Mr. Mobile. I was like, hey, here's the Zoom link. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there on whiskey number six, like, oh, yeah. Hey, Sherlyn, can I have a wake-up so call? <laughs> yeah, literally, Mr. Mobile's like, mm, I might not wake up in time. Can you just do like a, what's they call that when like uh, you need to check if the person's safe? Like a safety check? No. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I don't know what it's wellness called. Wellness check. Yes. Wellness like, I did check, a wellness yeah. check on Mr. <laughs> yeah. Mobile. It's really, are you are, are you alive? Uh, yeah. Confirming signs of life, yes. Yeah, yeah. And you did respond quite quickly i was surprised i didn't have to do a follow-up i didn't want you to be worried well my, <gasps> my my new watch told me it was time to get moving so i got moving <laughs> excellent yeah all right i think uh i think we can go a uh, quick fun fact from that local guy did you know cats like boxes because it keeps them warm and safe i wonder if mr mobile you're in a box because you're secretly a cat <laughs> not so secretly in fact uh my, my my feline nature was actually revealed on a previous engadget podcast uh, but um oh. sorry you missed that one yeah Go back oh, yeah. and listen to the past episodes. But That's I think right. that we're going to get started now. Yes. And so uh, one thing that we're going to do before we get started is we're going to do a big sync. We're all recording on our sides. And so I'm going to count down from three at the... Oh, actually, uh, let me start the Zoom recording. Julio, did you give me um, permission for that? Okay. Okay. So you might actually hear the Zoom voice say recording in progress. So let me just do that might come up on Mr. the screen. Mobile, you should keep voting. Recording in progress. Okay, yeah, everybody, like, dismiss that window. Sorry that we didn't do that before. That was my fault. But uh, the other thing that we're going to do is also um, sync our local recordings. So I'm going to count down from three. At the end of three, me, Sam, Sherlyn, and Fisher are all going to uh, make a sound. We can clap our hands, snap our fingers, whatever it is, and chat. We love it if you clap too. So, and then we're going to do, we're going to be like quiet for like five seconds because that helps me with editing. Uh, but let's count down. Three, two, one. Okay, now we're done. And I lied, it was 10 seconds. Okay, we got a request for Sam on his stream to work on something and then we can get going. Oh, uh, oh yeah, turn off autofocus, please, Sam. Uh, oh, okay. Those of you who uh, have seen my tweets will know that I have been struggling with Bluetooth on my laptop, which is uh, mysteriously disappeared. And I am using these god awful wired headphones. And the reason they're god awful is because At they cramp my, my style. They cramp my style. Yeah, they, look they, good, though. they cramp your makeup. They cramp your hair. I apologize. I don't like the, I don't, I, I like my hair. Hang on. I can't hear anything right now, but see. Um, yeah, yeah, and then anyway. right, and then when they go on, you don't have as much volume, so your head looks different. See, yeah, Mr. Mobile I, gets I get it. it. I get it. Because you have like some it. hair that you haven't mm. cut in ten years. <laughs> what? Get effed. We can't get <laughs> <Christmas> this podcast. <right? laughs> All right, it's uh, Julio. Are you think Sam's good to go? Okay. Fab. Okay. Great. All right, we're ready. Uh, Sam, are you? Oh, sorry, Sam. Ben, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Let's see, all right, here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Engadget Podcast. I'm Deputy Editor Sherlyn Lowe, and joining me as guest co-host this week is senior writer Sam Rutherford. Hey, Sam. Hey, Sherlyn. How you doing? Uh, we are post Samsung uh, today during the recording of this podcast. It is Thursday morning, and yesterday Samsung had its unpacked second unpacked event of the year second one that matters anyway and it launched like five new products we're going to dive into all of that this episode we also have a special guest here with us to to tear down what happened yesterday um we're also going to cover some other news this week do you know that ios 16 is maybe going to bring back the battery percentage symbol uh, if you're hyped for that stick around if you've been enjoying the show please make sure you subscribe on your podcast catcher of choice leave us a review please on itunes and send us an email with your thoughts to podcast at 
I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the f bombs again today, am I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Send us an email with your thoughts to podcast at engadget.com. We also live stream the recording of this podcast every Thursday at about 10 a.m. Eastern on the Engadget YouTube channel. We can interact with you live, take your questions, and answer them. It's always a fun time, so come hang with us then. All right, so let's get into it. I will uh, tee up the topic and then cue Mr. Mobile, okay? Yes. All right. So yeah, the big event this week was Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked. We saw new foldables and wearables, and you really can't say the word foldables without big industry foldy boy nerd, Mr. Mobile <laughs> himself, who is here as a guest this week to talk about everything Samsung with us. Hey, Mr. Mobile. Hey, Sherlyn, I'm changing my tagline forever. <laughs> Big industry foldy boy nerd. I love it, and I am very happy. You've almost cured my my small hangover uh, with there humor, you go. and I appreciate that. I love that you come right out the gate and admit that you're slightly hungover for our very Sherlyn, professional I, I, show. I got no secrets. I got no secrets for my friends at Engadget or their lovely audience. <laughs> I love this. All right, so we. I get, I'm guessing all three of us. I don't know if you did. Uh, I am also. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Welcome and and yes, it's been a busy week and uh, we're I, we're gonna just dive into it, I guess, right? We are. Uh, did you watch live stream? Uh, the live stream yesterday, Mister Mobile. I don't. Th I don't think I did. I think I did. Yeah, I turned <laughs> it on because I I debuted my YouTube video with a premiere so that people That's can right. join live. I usually do that, and That's people right. are like, "Why do you do this during the event?" And I'm like, "Because I've it's been 11 years of watching these events, and I just hate hate watching tech events. So let's all hang out." So I watched the end of it. Yeah. You know, I don't blame you for not watching it because the we some of us here had to sit through the whole thing. And yeah. it kicked off with a freaking Emily in Paris intro. Like, first of all, Sam was like, what is Emily in Paris? Yeah, well, wait, what, uh, uh, Fisher, did, did you even catch that reference at all? Because I I missed it completely. Zero idea what you Okay, all right, I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, yeah. Uh, to explain it for those of you tuning in slash the two of you here on the podcast, um, Emily in Paris is a Netflix show about a marketing executive who moves from Chicago to Paris uh, to work for like a luxury marketing firm. But wait, and doesn't she start out as like an intern? She's like a junior executive okay, at, okay. The, at the American, you know, headquarters of the firm. And then, you know, the American company buys this like French company. Why do I know so much about the plot? Don't ask me. I don't know how many times I've seen this show, <laughs> which is very embarrassing. Um, but anyway. Like I've seen this movie on the Hallmark Channel 85 times. Go ahead. Pretty much, right? Yeah. yeah, they move to Paris, they fall in love, except it's not that simple. Anyway, uh, what Samsung did was hire some of the actors from the French marketing agency to act like they're trying to come up with a commercial for the flip and the fold. And they use a lot of very cheesy hmm. marketing words to be like, think outside the box. And then one of them uses like a French baguette to describe the flip, like, you know, like a, a bread that can open and close, I guess. <laughs> I'm so it's glad I didn't watch this. The sense just terrible. I'm kind of upset <laughs> you didn't watch this. <laughs> no, no, no interest in this. I mean, it, of... it, 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 Galaxy S4 vibes are what I'm getting now, except oh without the chauvinism. Oh my goodness, absolutely. So, so anyway, I mean, neither of you caught the reference. I, even as someone who's watched the show a few times, did not need it there. So there you go. <laughs> um, but onto the actual news, the real news. There was like 15 seconds of BTS. So that's the actual news. That's the only thing. We're done. We're done talking about Unpacked. We're good. Oh, right. Thank you. Sweet. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. No. Oh, there they are. There they are. BTS with the Bora Purple flip. Okay. That was all the celebrity appearances. But now for the actual products that were launched, Galaxy Z Fold, uh, sorry, Z Flip 4 was the first thing that Samsung unveiled uh, yesterday at the keynote. Um, we, I mean, this is the smaller version of Samsung's pair of foldables. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Mobile? This this isn't your like daily driver right now, right? You're the Flip 3 is not your daily driver, right? Well, it is. So like I for the past year I've carried the Fold 3 and the Flip mm -hmm. 3 concurrently and the Razer 5G. Um mm -hmm. and I yeah, the Flip tends to be the weekend and um and nights, like the nights and weekend phone, like the kind of off duty, don't want to be on my phone so much and the Fold okay. is like the work day getting things done thing. So yeah, I've carried it for the past year. So you've been using both the Fold and the Flip, just Correct. switching out during the weekend. Sam, you use more of the Fold, right? Do you have any like interest in checking out the Flip? Um, I I'm, uh, I'm. It's hard for me to like want to carry two phones around, especially since I'm doing it a lot for review purposes. Mm. So when I can get away with carrying a single phone, I, that's what I do. So the Fold Three was, you know, my daily driver for 
pretty much almost exactly a year. I like the flip more than I like the fold. And th- this year, let's like put this out there. I think everyone in the industry has said, and we've said this a couple of times now, but the theme of Samsung's product launches this unpacked seems to be evolution, not revolution, or just refinement, or, excuse me, over everything. And the flip four is one clear example, right? Not much has changed here. They use like slightly more durable displays on the inside. The cover display, the cover screen is still like 1.9 inches, but it's got like some more widgets now. Uh, The cameras on the flip didn't get that many changes. It's really, really hard for me to kind of like list all the other differences or all the changes that came to the flip. Uh, Is it like, it's like a little bit lighter, I believe. Uh, Mr. Mobile, any of the hardware changes here on the flip excite you you're no you're 100 right that like there are very very few changes from a hardware perspective the flip right? is the most iterative of the, the more iterative of these two yeah um you know i i kind of get it i i feel like samsung hit such a home run with the flip three in terms of what you remember last year around this time yeah. when the flip three came out i think it was kind of a love fest almost everywhere even the outlets that didn't i forgot if it was tech, tech crunch or somebody was just like I forgot who this reviewer was, just did not like the Flip 3 at all. But even in that thing, there was like a whole meaty section of the center where it's like, it actually does what it sets out to do. And it does all the things, right? <laughs> so even the people who didn't recommend it still found a lot to like about it. So when you have a product like that and you're Samsung, you know, do you take the opportunity to have an S year and kick out basically the same thing with small refinements? Yeah, that's probably what we're seeing here, right? Yeah, I, and I, I oh, so I was like, I was gonna jump in real quick. I was like, I totally agree with you with, with the S year comment, which is like, it definitely feels like this is like, you know, for from the even going back to the fold and the flip, the f- original fold, the fold two, and the fold three, we got big generational jumps, and now we're maybe settling into like that TikTok cadence where we have a big design change one year and then a refinement the next year, and then two years later, you know, you get that big revamp, right. I forgot to point out that the one actual hardware change I am interested in with the flip or I'm excited for on the flip four is the bigger battery. It's got a 3,700 milliamp hour cell now. And my biggest problem with the flip three was always that it just wouldn't last all day. So this 15% increase will probably take it into like 24 hour territory, I think. Um, Maybe together with the Snapdragon 8 plus gen one, I don't know like what power efficiency improvement. Fisher, you look like you have something to say. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. That was the, that was the number one problem with the flip three was that yeah. it, like, I, you know, I used it almost every day. It mm-hmm. did not last almost any day. Right. So 3,700 versus 3,300 milliamp hours in the capacity is great, but mm-hmm. I was having a conversation with our friend David Amell last night and he reminded me that the, the Snapdragon H N one actually probably does bring enough efficiency improvements to, to give to us more battery that. life as well too. So I, I really hope that's true. Sam, I, I mean, first of all, when, when, when you mentioned Mr. David Immel uh, Fisher, I was hoping you would do your impression, but never mind. We can do <laughs> no. so you do a very good impression of David Immel. Um, Thank you. Of course, since you've lived with him for so long. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was always the biggest reason I could never really um, recommend the flip to anyone like it's a really cool form factor i've taken it out to show everyone and everyone's just very entranced by the form factor um and this is the phone i feel like the mainstream user would prefer whereas you got the pro power user like yourself and sam you both seem more into the fold right and let's talk about the fold four sam can you list out the physical differences this time around with the fold four yeah so um and they're they're kind of subtle well, you know, similar to the flip, uh, there is a new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor, mm-hmm. which is great. The screen is a tiny bit brighter, the main screen. Um, the exterior screen is a tiny bit wider, um, maybe like three millimeters, if that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very subtle, but, you know, those are kind of physical changes. The hinge is a tiny bit smaller, and the, the frame around the outside of the edge is a bit boxier. And then, you know, they revamped the camera, so there's a new 50 megapixel main sensor. And I, personally, this is one of the small but like changes that like I'm actually kind of excited for is that they moved from a 2x optical zoom to a 3x optical zoom mm-hmm. for the telephoto camera, which I, uh, you know, I really find useful. Um, and, you know, that's, you know, mo- mo- most of the big changes. But, you know, like we said, it's like very much refinement, very much, you know, kind of polishing a lot of the little things um, mm-hmm. with the phone. 
The under display camera is also another thing that Samsung says yep. it's, it's done a little differently. It's better camouflaged with the subpixel arrangement, um, which hopefully will make a difference in selfies that you use that camera for. In all your time with the Fold 4, uh, let's start with Mr. Mobile here. Have you used the under display camera to take a selfie? Doing it right now. Hold on. Damn, what the hell? <laughs> okay. Some, some live time. product testing. You yeah. Send this to us so we can put it up on the so screen. Here's the thing. Um, it's I will I will happily send it to you. Mm -hmm. There is so much processing that goes on when you take the photo because the camera is looking through that pixel mat still. First of all, when you fire up the camera, no matter how clean your display is, and you activate that under display selfie camera, mm -hmm. the phone will tell you to clean your lens. I cannot believe that Samsung <laughs> ships it like this because it's like, I, I, it's a good tool to have when you have a conventional camera lens, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's seeing the, the distortion from the, from the display. So that's annoying. Mm -hmm. um, and then you take the photo and you watch it process it. And like the processing is so important for it to yeah. like recomposite this thing. It looks, you know, not great. Uh, yeah. I think Max Weinbach was tweeting this morning. It's like, oh, it's, it's better. And uh, Max, I, we will have to do a little, side by side com <laughs> comparing because I, I don't know that it looks better enough to say it looks better than anything it's yeah it's terrible right and, and it, the weird thing about it is like like the way i kind of think about it it's like they uh it's like beauty mode has been turned on to the max yeah. and so everything looks mm -hmm. kind of super smooth nothing's really super sharp um but it you know if you give it give it a quick look you're like oh it might be okay but it actually looks kind of dated and i don't know about you but like would you ever consider them just removing the interior under display camera entirely because you know there's a, a selfie camera on the exterior of the device and if you want to take selfies that's how you do it so i was i was actually going to make the opposite point um like it, i i we have to understand what samsung's intention is for this inner camera yeah you're you're absolutely right you've got a cover camera selfie shooter for conventional ones. And then you can do that crazy butterfly mode thing. If you really want to take a great selfie, you can use the main camera array for that and use the outer display as a viewfinder. So this thing under the display is really only meant for video calls and they don't need to be that great. That's a good so point. I, yep. Right, I get it. Um, it's just, you, in that case, I guess they've done what I wanted them to do, which is make it a little bit better camouflaged. Mm -hmm. I just would, I would like more quality as well because ZTE has demonstrated that it can it can do both. It can right. make Absolutely. it almost invisible and also increase the quality somewhat. It's still not a good camera, but you know. We, I want to get into like, all three of us have had some of these devices on hand for a little bit now, maybe like just under 24 hours. I would like to talk a little bit about our experience so far, but before we get to that, I still want to kind of run down the news, the improvements that are, are here, uh, just for the people that are not all caught up. So Sam, what other differences on the uh, Fold 4 would you shout out, whether there's software or hardware? Um, so the software is actually kind of a big deal. Um, it's, mm -hmm. you know, running, uh, Android, Android based on Android 12 L mm -hmm. and that, you know, promises a lot of, you know, optimization improvements for the, that foldable dis display mm -hmm. that said, um, you know, it's going to take some time to really figure out what those are. There's a new task bar, um, which is really interesting. And, uh, I'm going to actually get back to that one real quick. The, the main screen is supposedly 45% stronger. Um, uh, due to some kind of rejiggering to the, you know, the display construction, that's pretty hard to test. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did they tell you anything else about that? I asked them, I was like, guys, could you just clarify? You said 45% stronger and then you rushed onto the next thing. Yep. Well, how is it 45% stronger? And they were like, uh, we'll get back to you. <laughs> um, uh, it's, so from what I understand is they, they re, um, reposition some of the layers, uh, of the ultra thin, thin glass and the polymers that they use to make the flexible display. And so somehow that reconfiguration is increasing the, the durability and, you know, oh, it's, right. it's, it's, it's really hard to tell. Yes. And, and the sponges, I'm not sure how that, how much that factors in. There are new sponges just behind the display that are designed to make sure that, you know, when you press it, it doesn't feel as squishy, which actually hasn't really been a huge issue on the, the fold three. So I'm you know not sure how much of a difference that's going to make. And for impact resistance too, right? So when right. you drop it, it has a little bit. And then they, they took out the metal layer. I just saw you guys very helpfully played a clip from the from the um, Unpacked where they took out the metal layer, replaced it with fiber reinforced plastic mm. or something. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah. So they really have re-engineered a lot of what's underneath that screen. 
not only underneath the screen, but also slightly on top of it, we were able to ask Samsung like what they did with the screen protector because Sam, you know, Sam had has had so many issues like everyone else with the screen protector over long term use. Sam, fill everyone in what Samsung told us. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we want to get into like our our horror stories and experiences with the <laughs> the Fold Three bubbling screen, but um, so obviously like I think durability is a big concern for foldables in general. And so, you know, last year they switched to a new protector that uh, had a new material and this year they didn't change that. Although they said there is a new adhesive, um, but that they're using that should be stickier. And they said there's a new application process that they're using at the factory to make sure that that uh, screen protector binds better with the actual flexible display. Awesome. Theoretically that should help prevent bubbling you know, that said, we're going to have to, you know, it's going to take some time to see how that actually holds up. Music to my ears. Yeah. The, I, my issue with fold three and, and flip three was that the protector started lifting at the hinge. So, right. Oh, okay. So let's just, let's just dive into this because I, I was yeah, watching your hands on video and you're talking right. about like your experience over the last year with your devices. And it sounds like you have a very similar experience to me where we started, you know, you, we started noting that there's like the, the screen protector was peeling back a little bit. And Samsung says, you're not supposed to remove that on your own, even though some people do. Um, but you know, th theoretically the guidelines are don't do that. Um, and then you, you took it in and you got the screen protectors on your flip and your fold replaced and kind of, kind of tell me about how that experience went. Yeah, it was really great because I live in New York city. If I lived anywhere else, it would not have been great. Uh, you know, first I feel Samsung, like Jersey city is pretty cool. Yeah. I feel it's like you're wrong. Yeah. It, it, it's in the uh, area, but you know, if, yeah, I, I got a little problem. I can't hear Sherlyn anymore. You know, oh, I think, really? uh, she just started <laughs> spouting some nonsense and then she disappeared. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, I called up Samsung. I was like, Hey, my screen protector is getting wonky. And they're like, Oh, go to your, you break. I fix. I'm like, cool. There is one very close to me. And I went, but you break. I fix did not have the screen protector in stock. Uh, it was back ordered. They didn't know when they would get one. So mm -hmm. if I didn't live where I lived or if I didn't live where we all live, I wouldn't have had really any other option other than to send it in and like my Fold 2, be without it for a week for a, for a Samsung turnaround. But I did go to Samsung 837. They had a little repair truck out there. And I laughed, Sam, when you were saying, yeah, Samsung advisors, you don't take the screen protector off yourself. They do like... They write a whole paragraph on how you're, you're, you're going to ruin the whole world if you pull that thing off. And I give it to the technician at the service center. And the first thing he does just thoughtlessly is just like rips that protector right off that screen. <laughs> like it, like, like picking up a newspaper off the floor. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I did that on my Fold too. It wasn't a big deal. Right. So yeah, they swapped up out both protectors. It took 90 minutes. It was free, a warranty replacement. They told me if I wanted to do it again, it would be 20 bucks. But under warranty, it was free once. Um, and it was actually a really great experience in that way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I later learned that the technician had, had a little edge of a thumb knit, thumbprint caught mm -hmm. under one of the edges, and it's now it's a big, ugly bubble. Um, but that's the technician's fault. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a problem with the process. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, kind, kind of jumping off that, it's like, you know, I think you mentioned that you had like mentioned, uh, found someone else who was a fold user when you were getting yours repaired, and like they were kind of experiencing similar issues. And I, I ran into the same thing. Like when I went to try to get mine repaired, um, I didn't have time to like wait for the repair. So I have to go back later, but mm -hmm. you know, there was three other people in line ahead of me, all had folds, all were getting their screen protectors replaced. Wow. And so this is not just like something that like us, like phone weirdos are, are like experiencing. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is, is that right after I got like about two weeks after I got the fold three, uh, this, and this was totally my fault. Like I, I, I dropped the phone and it caught on the edge of like a table and uh, caused a wrinkle in the screen protector. So I'm like, okay, no, no, like no big deal. Like, you know, I live in Jersey city. I can go, I can go to that Samsung A37 and I show up and they go, oh, we don't have, not only do we not have the screen protectors in stock, we don't have the machines that they use to install the screen, screen protectors yet. So it's like, Right after the phone comes out, it's even more difficult to get it repaired because sometimes they don't have the uh, materials or the equipment to do it. Yeah. Um, and so it's like the, the, the experience is just really kind of wonky um, in terms of like that customer is like, 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 like you said, kind of on your hands on, it's like it's a premium device. You kind of expect some sort of premium service level of service. It's so true. And, you know, I think this is one thing where we really like I am. I will stand up for foldables pretty much against every mm -hmm. every criticism that I think is unfair. I think one of the fairest criticisms you can make is that these are very special devices and they're still very expensive, but mm -hmm. the support experience needs to be there to back that up. Also, Samsung mm -hmm. has pivoted these devices from these ultra premium things. Do you remember, 
Guys, the first yeah. fold and the second fold, you would buy them and they'd be like, you bought a fold, so you get a BMW. Yep. You get <laughs> fancy chocolates in the mail. Wow, you, you got a, a BMW? Wow. Yeah, you didn't get did, your, did, you, uh, did you actually ever use any of those perks? There, there was like, like you could get like a free cake premium. from like a nice yeah, like bakery a, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, free dessert. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You could, yeah, every three months you had a new, like it was a special app, right? And it is shocking how quickly that turned into like unboxing these things yesterday. And I was like, oh, crappy cardboard box, crappy little sleeve, yep. one cable, no wall wart, not even like a welcome thing. Like it's Samsung has just leaned so hard into we're now going to mainstream these things. Yeah. And mm -hmm. fine. You know what? I love it. The more foldables, the better. But then you have to be ready to support it. Um, and I think I guess it, th th if there's a silver lining, then if all those people in line with you were replacing their screen protectors, then it's good that the, there is a factory installed screen protector there um, so that because that's a much easier repair than lifting out the whole display. Which yes, absolutely. It's still more fragile. So it's good to have the PET on there. So whatever. I like that that we spent like a significant amount of time talking about that screen because a it's one of the like biggest changes coming uh, to the Z Fold 4, and b it is probably what's going to affect your experience of the foldable uh, the most. I mean, I think the cameras are 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 good. It's good that they've upgraded the cameras to the similar sensors as on the S series, uh, the S twenty two series, it's but. Really good. I think we we needed to talk about this and, and we have even more. I, I have so many more questions about like the software for you guys. I do yep. want to run through like what else Samsung unveiled to like there's a pair of watches, the Galaxy Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro. Um, these are, I mean, I'll just tell you all what is different, right? This is the Watch 5 replaces the Watch 4, which is like the watch active sort of thing where it's the most lightweight, the most uh, minimal kind of watch that Samsung makes. Um, it runs Wear OS 3.5 that Samsung co-engineered with Google. The real big hardware changes here are, again, it's like a more durable, right? It's got a, a sapphire crystal glass display and uh, the underside of the device, which is where the sensors are, um, Samsung has tweaked the curvature here. So it should sit more snugly, or it should have more contact uh, surface area with your wrist. And they've added a skin temperature sensor, but it won't be something you can use at launch. This is something that I don't think they need necessarily like FDA approval, but they don't seem to have implemented any actual apps that make use of this yet. So cool. Thanks for the new feature that isn't really a new feature at the moment. Um, the Watch 5, uh, everyone was kind of worried about this, uh, especially if you're like a, a Samsung watch fan, but everyone was like, where did the physical bezel go? Well, to be clear, the Watch 4 didn't have a physical bezel, but it also had this touch sensitive like border around the screen that you can use to navigate through your apps and scroll through things. And the Watch 5 has that too. Um, but I, I don't know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of the touch bezel i prefer the physical bezel myself and yeah. hopefully it comes back if you if you want that you can still buy the watch 4 classic because it's mm -hmm. not also not on the watch 5 pro uh mr mobile and sam i know sam uses a galaxy watch mr mobile do you use a galaxy watch i don't no i made a, a garmin and I, I i'm always reviewing different wear os True. watches so like um i like I like the physical bezel too, and I, mm -hmm. I'm going to miss it. It's, it's always great when you can use a control element without mm. looking at it because you can mm. feel out a bezel and it's so satisfying to click it around. Like just, yeah. And oh yeah. I, a nice just, piece of watch legacy, right? Sam? Yeah, I, I just I just sit there and spin it sometimes just because it's like, it's, it's, it's like a built-in fidget toy. Fidget spinner, absolutely, yeah. So, but you know what? I, I'm glad they kept the virtual one at least because the, mm -hmm. it is, it is, we're at generation five. It is intuitive enough if you've used enough of these things that you know you can scroll through a big list by running your finger around it. So I'm glad we at least have that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, I've, 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 not, I've never been a big fan of Samsung's software. It's UI on its wearables. I think it's really? good. It's just not my style. Um, and the same goes for the hardware. So I'm looking forward to reviewing it. It's just I'm also looking forward to getting back on a watch that I that I prefer. It's a What's matter of What's the taste. watch that you prefer, the Garmin? Uh, yeah, yeah, the eighteen hundred dollar watch that I uh, uh, did, didn't buy with my own money. So yeah, okay, weird, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, not, of strange. course you prefer. Wow, so surprising <laughs> and morally ethical of you. Anyway, the Galaxy what you, Watch. Wait, 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 wait. Oh boy, wait, I was, uh, got, having that problem again. Sherlyn just oh. dropped right off. Yeah, it's a oh. yeah, it dropped right off a cliff. Uh, <laughs> Galaxy Watch Five Pro um, is a new entrant to the Galaxy Watch series. So this is like something that Samsung finally did that was actually new and different. Um, it is a 45 millimeter version of the Galaxy Watch 5, but it's also like 
more durable. It's got a slightly stronger sapphire crystal glass than the regular Galaxy Watch 5. It's using a titanium case. It's got a D buckle that like clasps uh, more securely and snugly into place. Um, and like I said, it's 45 millimeters, so it's bigger. But the most interesting thing about the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, and Kurt, I, I think you two agree with me, but let's see, is the fact that it has a 590 milliamp hour battery in there that Samsung promises will last up to 80 hours. We don't know what that number is derived from. If, if, if you know all your other smartwatch type of features have to be disabled to hit that number yeah, fantasy or if land. that's right exactly like regular use um and i'm also not sure if the screen is a little bit brighter right because samsung said this is designed for the great outdoors outdoor use so you've got like some outdoor specific exercises they've added in there like like you know what apple introduced on the watch on the most recent version of watch os which is like route specific workouts like biking or running if you've if you've repeated a specific route a lot of times that'll save to your watch and then you can just start it again the next time and it'll like tell you when you're going off course or it'll help you get back easily uh i see mr mobile rubbing your temples do you even work out bro Oh wow! Hey Sam, you you just want to like <laughs> hang out by ourselves for a second? No, yeah, uh, I don't, it's, 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 it's this weird like squeaking in my ear. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> no, you know what? I I love all these features, Shirlinda, and I thank you for reminding me about most mm. of them. But I saw the Pro yesterday for the first time, and what mm. I didn't expect from the way Samsung described this watch, what I didn't expect was to for my first question to be to this person who had the Pro, oh, is that the Pro? I couldn't huh. tell because. Huh. Like, uh, it, just from my perspective, if you're going to make a watch that does all these things, that is for the great outdoorsman, then, or the outdoors person, make it, like, give it a different style. Make mm -hmm. it Casio chunk. Give it that bezel. Like, Casio do something chunk. different, you know? Like, I feel like the, one of the reasons I don't like the Galaxy Watch line is because like, it's, it's kind of, it's become more and more minimal, which is mm. to say, to me, more and more forgettable. So I mm -hmm. think there was an opportunity with the Pro to be like, Let's just make this big, you know, maybe Garmin-esque kind of thing. And instead, it's just a fatter version of this kind of like, yeah, whatever, it's a watch. Like, I don't know. It's Maybe it's me. <laughs> I think Sam was a little more excited about the Watch 5 Pro than you are, right, Sam? Uh, I mean, a little bit. I, I mean, I think your, your criticism of like the 5 Pro being just a bigger version of the 5 is like kind of spot on. Um, it, it definitely, that's what it is. Like, you can't, unless you like really like, like touch it and like get to know it. Like you don't notice that this is a titanium frame. That's not something that yeah. jumps out at you. Mm -hmm. um, that said, like, I'm, you know, my preference is like, I like that more minimalist look. Um, uh, I think for the, for, for the, on the record, like I think the gear S2 was probably the best Samsung smartwatch, like looks wise they ever made just personally for me. I really like that really clean minimalist aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, but in, so like, it, it's and it's interesting because like you said, you're wearing a Garmin watch, and this it seems like Samsung is kind of go after that market Absolutely. with the Watch Five Pro, and so it's like it's interesting that like you say it's like oh it doesn't it doesn't feel like it really hits that demographic, and I think you're at, definitely right because it doesn't have that like you know it doesn't call out to people who are the hikers and you know the bikers right. and who who really want something that's like feels more rugged. It doesn't it doesn't give off that vibe to me. No, yeah, not at all. Like you don't have five pushers on the sides that you can reassign. You don't have a crazy dual level display like Mavoy or Casio do have done. You don't have any enhanced styling. And you're right, the titanium doesn't jump out. I was just wearing the Mont Blanc Summit 3 for a while and you can't tell it's titanium until you put it on and it's lighter, right? So mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, I mean, it, again, if you're gonna do this, then if you're gonna do something different, then why not, why not make it distinctly visually and aesthetically different um, to to enhance that kind of specialty focus. But I mean, I guess you could always buy the golf edition, right? Well, the golf yeah. edition isn't that different either. No, like, let's be honest. Right. The golf mm. edition, by the way, I, I got this wrong in my hands-on video, which, uh, first of all, I wanted to talk about on this podcast how Samsung gives you different information on the briefing and then at the hands-on <laughs> and then afterwards when the press releases come, it's just like three different versions of the same information. Um, <laughs> but anyway, what I got wrong was that I thought the golf edition only existed for the pro version of the watch, but it actually exists for the watch five in 40 and 44 millimeters as well. The main difference between the golf edition and its regular regular you know counterparts is that it's got a different strap so the strap has like the little stripe pattern on it and it's got some it's got a, like a unlimited membership to the smart caddy app which will i believe come preloaded on the golf edition of the watch so 
wow yeah. like i mean that's Hooray. it like you that's and yeah, then back like, to your point mr mobile that you were saying um basically when it's not when, when the samsung released this watch it wanted to do something different but it didn't go all out and do something extremely different it just was like being very safe while taking this small risk. And that's what yeah. Samsung is doing this year overall too, right? All of the changes are very safe. These are, we don't want to rock the boat. We think we're in a good place. And they really need some competition coming in to really push them, I think, to take more chances. Uh, and oh, I want to pick your brain, Mr. Mobile, about the competition because I feel like you have more experience than the rest of us on this podcast about uh, what else is out there. I know I've saved a lot of things for last now, so I'm, I'm just going to like push that, throw that a little further down this episode. We'll get back to it. I will remember for <laughs> sure. Last thing that Samsung unveiled yesterday is the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Although I also saw at another Samsung presentation, they called it the Buds Pro 2. <laughs> they, they don't even know the names of their own devices. But according to all the materials I've seen that were not at the Samsung 837 event, it is the Buds 2 Pro. These are like smaller Galaxy Buds, but they come with uh, active noise cancellation. They come with like, they support 24 bit streams, um, just much better sound quality. Uh, they're promising as well as fit. I personally, when I tried uh, briefly put on one of these uh, earbuds at the hands-on event, I like them. Uh, Mr. Mobile, do you care about the one? No. The Buds 2 Pro? <laughs> no. Glossing oh, right over say, say section over. Yeah, we're, we're good. Yeah. All right, we're done. All right, and that's it. If you care more about the Buds 2 Pro, you can check out Billy Steele's article on our uh, website, Engadget.com. But for the rest of this episode, we are not going to talk about the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. We will jump right back, though, to our experience with these devices now that we've had them like a little bit, right? I've been using the Flip 4, which I'll be reviewing for Engadget.com. Sam's got the Fold 4. Uh, Mr. Mobile probably has everything under the sun. I do want to brag. I have the Watch 5 Pro. That I think not a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get one. Of oh those. boy, you're, you're bringing up this shade already. Wow. <laughs> so if you want the early one of the earlier reviews of the Watch Five Pro, will be here at Engadget.com. So definitely Damn. shoot Damn. your questions. Um, <laughs> so far though, I've been using the Watch Four uh, more than the uh, the Watch Five more than the Watch Five Pro, just because I it's been 24 hours or less, and I want to test the smaller one first. Um, so far, either of you have any? problems with the fold four or anything that you like particularly you want to call out yeah uh, i mean it's so early i want to i want to thank yeah. you for trying to get me on next week so that we would have had time with it unfortunately i had a time conflict <laughs> so this we're still like 20 less than 24 oh, hours in right so have a life damn all right <laughs> so no problems um from from my end so far mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but what i've found mostly is just the added conveniences that have kind of snuck in without me being ready. Normally I'm all set. I set up the phone and I've got notes ready and I'm ready to just take every first impression. It's been too busy mm. to do that. So setting up for this podcast, I just put the spec sheets for the phones up on the screen mm. of the Fold 4 and I put mm. that alongside my own notes from the briefing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's the Android 12L or the Samsung enhancements, but it's really made it a lot more fluid, a lot more mm. seamless to hop in and out of different things while multitasking on the full force. So that's cool. I've been having a positive experience for the last 22 hours. What about what about you, Sam? Yeah, uh, it, I, I agree with you completely. I really like what they've done with the new taskbar. It's I think mm -hmm. just the animation where it changes from your standard like uh, you know app tray on your home screen, and then you go into an app and it minimizes, but it's so yeah. it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's really really slick. And so this reminds me, I wanted to ask you, do you, so how much have you gotten into the new multitasking gestures? Because there's some new things where you can, you know, drag icons up from that taskbar and instantly launch into the multi-view mode. And there's a couple other ones, and I'm not even sure I found them all yet, um, about like, you can launch right into, um, uh, like windowed mode. And there's a new app pairing procedure, which I have not figured out at all yet. I, yeah, I haven't figured out the, the nuts and bolts of that at all. But again, like I, I haven't had to think today. Like I was talking to you guys while I was putting the stuff up on the fold screen. And again, I've got Chrome next to Evernote. And then when I duck out of that, like, first of all, when you swipe up and you think the taskbar is going to get in the way, that was my first thing. I was like, you guys are moving the taskbar into the Android gesture area. You are high and drunk. What are you going to, what are you doing? Right. It's, it's great. It's never screwed up once. Like it knows mm -hmm. what a home gesture is and it gets out of the way. That's pretty cool. And then when I hop into another app like Telegram and then I come back, it's very easy to just tap that app pair again. And it's, it's not stuttering. It's not mm -hmm. awkward. It's, it's, it's just. Well, well, it just works, trademark. I mean, it, it feels great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, like the software really feels like it's gotten some of the biggest improvements. 
you know, like you said, I still, you know, I still want to dive into see how they've changed flex mode, because I think that's been kind of a long standing wish that a lot of foldable users have. It's like, Absolutely. let us, let us do more with this form factor, with this yes. ability to fold the display in half and, and stuff like that. And it seems like, you know, they're, you know, now three years in, four years in, like they're starting to kind of hit their stride with like the collaborations with Google and Microsoft and whatnot. Um, but, you know, we want to see, I want to see that trickle down more to third party. And I think, you know, just, and, and this is something that like doesn't get, you know, talked about a ton is like the availability, the support for Android 12L, I think is going to really unlock that ability for a lot of developers who may have wanted to do something like that, but didn't necessarily have the tools to do it. I hope right. you're right for sure. Go ahead, Sherlyn. Sorry. No, you're fine. It seems like we're reaching maturity. I, I do want to see what you both think of the touchpad in flex mode that they introduced. Um, Me too. <laughs> right? Because like I, when you set it up as so-called like a faux laptop uh, with a screen half folded, folded with like a sort of keyboard type setup, right? With the top half of the screen being where the content is and the bottom half is the trackpad control area. I found, I mean, Brian pointed out, Brian, our video producer pointed out to me that like, uh, isn't it easier to just poke at the top half of the screen as opposed to using this fake trackpad at the bottom? So if you're setting it up on a table, it seems a little not super useful, but if you're holding it up with one hand, then that's when it feels like if you've got the screen half folded like that and you're trying to navigate the top half uh, with the bottom half, it feels a little bit more useful, but this is not something I can tell. I mean, I don't have the device on me anymore, um, but yeah. I do really like the addition of flex mode and that touchpad uh, to the Flip 4. I mean, it's it just because I'm using the Flip 4 so much more as a one-handed device, the fight, sorry, did I just uh, <laughs> freaking... <laughs> <laughs> you said you're gonna do it uh, at the beginning of the show so you know it was gonna happen eventually yeah right. i i really enjoy how like i am surprised how much i enjoy using the flip four in what you describe as banana phone mode mr mobile where like yeah. it's kind of just half bent yes. and i the other, i was eating dinner and i was i had a tv on and I had to scroll Reddit at the same time because this is my life. This is what I do. I watch TV, life. eat, and read Reddit. And I was reading it on my Pixel 6 Pro at first, laying out next to my dinner bowl. I was like, I can't, I, this angle is wrong. This is a really weird angle for me to be reading long blocks of text. And I was like, wait, I have the fold. So I propped the top screen up, like, you know, half bent, and I set it next to my, and I just used the bottom half to scroll, and it was yeah. beautiful. I yeah. could read more easily. I could scroll easily. This is so far. I just like just a few hours with this thing, and I really like. I'm see, yeah. doing it right now. Like I'm using the the flex mode panel with the trackpad, and I'm like just moving this Isn't Windows like mouse arrow yeah. around my my browser, and yeah. I'm obsessed. It is like someone pointed out to me that it's just like LG did on the Wing. You had a trackpad oh, yeah. thing, and you had yeah. your mm -hmm. mouse pointer. I'm like, oh, that's what it, it felt vaguely familiar, and yes. I liked it on that phone a lot too. Like it's really really cool. And to yeah. speak to the earlier point, like. Uh, no, it's in my experience, it's not easier to just to just tap something on the top half of the mm -hmm. screen when you're folded mm -hmm. because you're not often you're not always sitting back like leaning back in the cut on your couch just chilling. Yeah. Like sometimes you're on an airplane tray table and you're way above the screen, so it's easier to mm -hmm. interact with the bottom half. So like it's really good to have these these added user interface elements, and I think they make flex mode panel actually useful. Instead of mm -hmm. last year where I was like excited and I did the review, I'm like, I might use this and then never did because it didn't have a, a trackpad mode. I think the trackpad right. mode will really make this very helpful. I'm excited for you both to test it out more in depth. Um, the other thing that I've used the Z Flip for already is like as my um, mini little self tripod -y video camera. Um, sure. I propped it up at the gym and me and some of my gym friends were like doing TikTok style videos already. We're like, oh, let's jump oh, on the yeah. medicine ball one by one in a row. Uh, you got that footage to look forward to in our <laughs> review video. No, it's, I'm never going to release it. It's, it's <laughs> unless there's a Snyder cut. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very fun of a phone to review, right? Compared to all the different phones that the three of us, you know, that comes across our, our plates uh, all the time. How stoked are you to review these devices? Let's start with you, Sam. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely excited. Um, and, and to like to me, because of the refinement and like Samsung's big push to make this mainstream, this feels like a jumping point for mo normal people, not like phone nerds, to like maybe start considering getting a foldable. Like they like you know, especially with the Flip, you know, they made the price really attractive last year, and I think that's one of the reasons. Like there was like so much excitement about it, and it's definitely super stylish. And so it's like 
oh, it, it feels like this is like where that entry point is for the average consumer. And so I think kind of looking at it from that standpoint, I think is very interesting. Um, and then just like, you know, for, for for kind of like what Mr. Mobile said, it's like, you know, I, I'm kind of a defender of, of the foldable things, uh, of foldable devices as well. And, you know, aside from the, the screen protector, the bubbling issue, you know, I, I really want to make a, a point that is like, these phones are actually incredibly durable outside of that, because, you know, you don't use a case on your phone, I don't use a case on my phone. And yeah, I've got some scuffs and some scratches, but like, I've beaten this phone up more than pretty much any other phone I've owned. And it's yeah. actually holding up surprisingly well. It absolutely is. I, yeah, I said that in my hands on an awful lot. Like my flip just, I was literally I in, a, in a river getting rained on and I put it on a muddy rock and got dirt in the thing to get a selfie. Like I did everything you shouldn't do with the flip. And I've spent a year basically saying like, oh, whatever, I mean, maybe it'll break. And it hasn't like it's not people talk about the durability of these things and they are right to. And as we talked mm -hmm. about for our whole service and repair section, it's it's important. But I feel like people think you have to treat these things with kid gloves and you do not. You not anymore. Them. And one of the big reasons I upgraded to the fold is because, you know, I had a kid right around the same time that phone came out. And it's like that water resistance, like, you know, my, my kid has like peed on it. He's vomited on it. And it's like it's it's like I put I, know, oh. I just I just run it under the faucet and wash it off. And it's totally good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sam, what? We, I'm, we, look, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like, I can't keep my phone in a different room from the kid. So like, you know, I need to have it on me. And sometimes like, you know, you don't know when a little, little baby is going to throw up. It, it just happens. And true, so like, true. you're making but, like having them so appealing. So I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> but just, just having that peace of mind where it's like, oh, this phone is like actually kid proof where like the original Fold and the Fold 2, you always felt it was like you had to treat it with like the the the, the preciousness of a Fabergé egg. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, it, we, we don't we don't have that anymore. I want to point out that your kid also did throw up on me, which was not a big deal. It was, but <laughs> this is true. You cannot control when kids and where and when kids throw up. So there you right. go. You, um, you, you think I'm talking crazy. You've experienced it firsthand. Okay. Exactly. Mike, when are you gonna? Just my mother's voice just echoing me. When are you gonna have a kid, Mike? I'm like being kids. No, no. <laughs> I have too many foldable phones. To have a kid. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Speaking of too many foldable phones, I want to get back to that point about competition, Mr. Mobile. Um, what? So we we just spent this entire episode so far talking about how far Samsung has come, but it feels to me, at least, that like the rest of the competition does not measure up in terms of making progress. In your experience, because you've seen so many more of these. Than us is that true is have they made more progress elsewhere yeah that's been my position for a little bit i think the mm -hmm. thing is like it's it, it can be contradictory we kind of have to hold these two con conflicting um ideas in our heads like mm -hmm. all the improvements we've talked about so far in these things are important and probably a lot of them are going to make for really great foldables and samsung continues to do great work in that regard but in the same time because there's no other meaningful foldable competition here mm -hmm. it feels like they just they can do a year like this where it feels very iterative and, and almost boring. If they weren't foldables, that would be a quite a dull year for me. Right. Um, because either because of market forces or political forces, like some of these mm. great competitors cannot come to the U S I'm thinking specifically of the Oppo find N this mm -hmm. wonderful little compact foldable that sort of splits the difference between the flip and, and, and book style foldables. That mm. is a wonderful device specifically with regard to its screen fold. You know, it doesn't have the deep crease that the, the Samsung phones do, mm. and it has a couple other uh, enhancements. And I think it was pretty fairly cheap compared to compared to the Fold. I think it was 1500 when it launched. And then the Vivo X Fold, which is this crazy thing. And if you've not seen these things, folks, I get it. I'm just spouting nonsense brand names at you. <laughs> but you, and, and I, I won't pimp my own video. Find out whatever coverage you want. But that was one of my favorite <laughs> videos to shoot, like that, that Vivo Find X, the Vivo Fold X, Vivo X Fold. Um, just this leather back and this insane camera array and this huge battery. And again, a crease that is less visible. I mean, way mm -hmm. less visible and a bigger display area front and back and some better software ideas and some like it is the phone I would buy if it were offered here. I would have ditched the fold for it, hmm. but I can't wow. and nobody can because they're not sold here. So it, that's annoying. And we just got a what new news this morning about Motorola uh, revealing its new razor exclusively for China. Well, that's fun. It's stupid. Um, but like the same thing on the flip phone side, the Huawei, the P50 pocket isn't coming oh. here. The, mm -hmm. um, the TCL Chicago was canceled. Like 
-hmm. Samsung d needs to feel some heat because as somebody said to me um, from Samsung, actually, he was like, yeah, I actually agree because I think Samsung does its best when it feels threatened. Uh, they yeah. need that pressure. Yep. Yeah. Like you don't want to get complacent. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I think the competition could really apply some of that pressure if it were, if it were sold here. And it's a shame that it's not. Yeah. And, and if you look at it, if you, you know, if Samsung was able to take, you know, certain bits and pieces from those competitor uh, foldables that aren't available, then you'd be like, oh man, we're seeing a huge, uh, you know, jump in terms of like, you know, decrease the visibility, uh, decrease the visibility of the crease, but like, you know, yeah. try, try new materials on the back. And like, you know, it's like, as you, as you, as you mentioned with the Vivo, it's like, I, w I really want to see like a really, really premium camera setup on the fold s closer to what you get on like the S22 Ultra. And it's like, there's still that gap between this phone is way more expensive than the S22 Ultra, but the camera experience isn't quite as good. And that just doesn't feel great from a consumer standpoint. Completely agree. Yeah. And I, I think uh, it, it, it was a puzzling decision also for Samsung not to change the look of the camera module this year for Fold 4. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Fold 4 next to the Fold 3, they look identical on yeah. the back. But those camera enhancements are actually, as you said earlier, like they are significant and they could be big. I'm, I'm really surprised they didn't like accent that visually to drive yep. that point home because that's going to hurt them a little bit, I think, in perception. Mm -hmm. They're being a little bit lazy, right? They're like a little bit like coasting right well, now. You said this in the watch section and sorry, thank you for reminding me. Well, I think what they're doing is saving money. I think we heard mm -hmm. a couple of years ago that Samsung was on this like massive internal push to cut costs. I think that's what we're seeing. You have a golf edition watch where the only difference is really the band and the paint job. Right? You've got this like, we don't have to change the tooling for the camera module because it with, that would cost money. I yeah. really feel like they're trying to maximize profits in a way. That's what it feels like to me, uh, mm -hmm. a non-economist with a theater degree who um, just makes YouTube videos. That's back be your back new to you, actual <laughs> reporters. <laughs> new lower third. The, Michael Fisher, a non-economist with a theater degree. I love that. That's all I'm going to call you from now on. I do want to point out that someone in our live chat, quite a few people, but including Ken, Ken Sai, uh, brought up the Xiaomi Mi Mix Fold 2. Have you had any experience with that one? Oh, the, the, that's the one that's like coming out today or something. That's this crazy... Because I tried the Mi Mix, the first Xiaomi Mi Mix. I did cover right. that. It was the YouTube video where David Kogan and I ate a lot of pizza. Uh, <laughs> but again, not mix, invited, but okay. No, okay. <laughs> no, yeah. So, well, you're over there in Jersey. You're so far yeah, away. True, yeah. uh, it, it, like this thing looks impressive. Xiaomi has been teasing it uh, and I will have to buy it because they don't, they don't mm. have a center send me anything, but it looks um, very thin and it looks like it has a huge battery. So great point. Thank you, chat. Like we should not forget that that's out there. Unfortunately, Xiaomi makes, I think the least effort of anyone to, to ensure that Western outlets that some Western outlets know about its foldable ambitions. Yeah. Let me see what I can do for you there, Mr. Mobile Thanks. Talk. Well, Thanks. And, and on top of that, Xiaomi was talking about like 10 years ago, they're like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna come to the US market. We're gonna come to North America. And every year it's like, oh wait, where's Xiaomi? Still not here, still not here. And it's like, you know, and Xiaomi makes a great product. And it's like, it would, yeah. it would be great to have that as an option. Um, but, you know, sadly, not really, uh, that, that's still not the case. Yeah. I do wish we had more time to really, really pontificate on all of that stuff because a lot of Chinese brands make great things and they can't come over here for several reasons. Uh, Xiaomi does come over with its wearables sometimes and they're sold on Amazon, mm -hmm. um, like yeah. the, the little me band. And some of it's like uh, uh, home theater products too. Exactly. And they have smart rice cookers. Come on. Xiaomi makes a lot of cool stuff uh. that I want to buy. The other thing is Xiaomi has like part of its headquarters <laughs> in Singapore, which is why I get very like excited about some of their stuff because I'm like, oh, oh, I know a lot of people that might work for some, maybe. Um, but yeah, no, we will have to pick up this conversation another time. We will have to invite you back when you're not busy as hell. Make Mr. Mobile. longer podcasts. It's I agree. Fun. <laughs> I said that as a listener too. Like whenever I'm listening to you guys, I'm like, we're like, we have to wrap it up. I'm like, why? I have eight hours of filming to do and I want to Aww. listen to you more. So. Huh, we'll talk. I know I know our producer Ben is on the call taking notes. <laughs> Going like maybe we will. And also we have we have like other limitations, but nothing nothing is stopping us from making our own thing. So we will have our own conversation, you me and dot. Sam about what we can do after this. But in the meantime, yo, thank you for joining us today, Mr. Mobile. It's always helpful to have your insight as usual. Thank you very much for having me. I love talking to you guys on or off the mic. And thanks to everyone behind the scenes as well. And thanks to everyone who was listening. It was, it's really great. I really love coming on the show every time. And I, I thank you for the time you've given me. Where can people find your work and you online? 
the Mr. Mobile is the place to go on YouTube, T H E M R M O B I L E. And if you want to hear me talking on Twitter, and where I talk too much, I'm at Captain Two Phones. It's Captain the Number Two Phones. And uh, is there anything else you want to tell your fans? <laughs> I'm being aggressively shouted at in the chat to say the line. So, so absolutely. Um, stay out of New Jersey, my friends. Oh, oh I'm kidding. Wow. Sam, I, Sam, I love your state. Your state is, is wonderful. Sherlyn is just a pain. Um, no, I, 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 I want to come visit you both. Thanks, everyone. Stay mobile. You're not my invited. Friends. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, you, you ruined the it. line. Yes, come on. on. You you this is why after all, all of that. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Stay mobile, my friends. You stay Better. out of New Jersey. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we can do some Q and A. Yes. Uh, I don't okay. Know how we much got time some. Have, but yeah. yeah, we got some Q and A. Uh, I'd like to get through all the stuff that I banked. Yes, yes. I just want to make a note of where the segment ended. Mm -hmm. so people are like on on my side. People are like poor Sherlyn, you Mr. Mobile sucks. No, I'm, I made that last one up. <laughs> like wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're never invited here ever. Fisher. Sher yeah, Sherlyn single handedly keeping the New York New Jersey rivalry going. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know it's Fisher. Also, not... where's the new L three of not an economist, just a. Uh, I love um, that. Yeah. <laughs> phone theater major. Yeah, yeah, theater, yeah. With, with yeah. The theater degree. degree. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's run through all the uh, chat stuff that I banked. I absolutely didn't get to everything. I bet uh, Sherlyn is going to comb through the chat also, mm -hmm. but let's just like scream right through it. Mm -hmm. So we've got Julio Giraldo saying, uh, or Giraldo saying, uh, I have an iPhone SE second edition and it shows my battery percentage. Why are people saying it's coming back? That's because it's on iOS 16 beta. Uh, we're talking specifically about the iOS 16 beta, and we're going to talk about how ugly the battery percentage is after we're done talking to chat. So just running straight through that. Uh, that local guy said that uh, in relation to the Emily in Paris uh, like sketch before mm -hmm. or at the beginning of the Unpacked, mm -hmm. uh, says, as, as a French person, it's stupidly funny. <laughs> yep. Agreed. <laughs> DJ by steps said that the fold four is the top of the food chain. Uh, ZL Thomas Z uh, said, just want to make a comment that uh, Michael's hair is looking majestic AF today. Oh, mm. thank you. Nope. Thank you. Which is why oh, I can felt we, can really we good. Show, when... um, can we show the selfie he took during the thing too? I know we have it teed up and ready to go. Uh, Julio uh, informed me about it. Let's see that selfie. Yeah. Is that majestic oh. AF? No, yeah, it's, no, it's good. Appreciate it. Not, not, <laughs> not my favorite photo. I'm glad you showed it. You should show the picture. I helped you anyway. Uh, moving on. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I felt good when um, Mr. Mobile said my hair looked good because, I mean, he's Don't always looking look quaffed. Man. <laughs> so, dude named Charlie said uh, to Mr. Mobile specifically, hello, good sir, big fan, lol, sorry. Don't be sorry. We can <laughs> all meet our day. heroes. Sorry. Oh, so I love that. Thank you. I love I loved to hang out with uh, Mr. Mobile in person because when he gets recognized on the streets, I freak out like I am a fan myself. <laughs> oh my God, you're Mr. Mobile? And then I run away. <laughs> it's the weirdest reaction. So, oh my gosh, they put up Sherlock Musk. Oh. <laughs> this is what you get. You, you oh deserve God. this. This is what you were telling me about. I missed I this. Yes. You did miss oh. this. You had to go back and watch this again, Fisher. I, I'm horrified. I will show you the actual Sherlock clip, but, Musk. Uh, okay, so now uh, we're actually getting into like questions. some very specific gadget kind of questions. Yes. We have user just Y, just the letter Y, <laughs> says that when you close the uh, fold four, what is how's the glass on glass contact? What's that like? There is there isn't any. It's uh, it does it, that the same like kind of gap. You know, you can actually okay. see it. Sorry, yep. bad webcam. And it still makes that extremely satisfying click, um, which is one of the best things about foldables, uh, regardless of whether you actually like the devices or not. Yeah, absolutely. And there's that there's that sense that you're finishing something up too. Like yes, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turning off your screen, you're like, I'm done with that. If there was glass on glass contact, would the glass be able to scratch itself? Not unless there was material there, because it's not a harder mm -hmm. than itself, right? 
Is that right. how physics works? Yeah, 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 I think that's how physics works. Theater major. <laughs> and that, that's one of those things where Theater like, major. you know, you, you do have to kind of like make sure it's like, oh, like don't have, don't, don't put anything in between. This is not a wallet. Like you're not, you don't, don't just like stuff a credit card in between, you know, the size mm. of a fold or a flip or whatever. Right. And they make that point on the, like on the screen film when you remember. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the box. first, it's the first thing that boots up. Like when you like turn on the phone, it's like, right. okay, the, you can, the, the screen is kind of soft. Don't put anything in between the two halves and don't take off the screen protector. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, then we have another comment from user LP, thinking that it's not the actual LP from Run the Jewels, but I am <laughs> like looking forward to seeing Run Probably the Jewels not. tonight. I'm going to MSG tonight to see Run the Jewels and uh, Rage Against the Machine. But anyway, LP asked, uh, drop my Fold 2 the day it came out, um, and they repaired it for free oh. Uh, oh. just to get the experience, while big benefit to <laughs> living uh, by a Samsung experience store. This is connecting with what Mr. Mobile said, where, you know, if you live in the big cities, you can get to a Samsung experience store, you're probably going to get better service yeah. than you would anywhere else in the country or probably the world. Yeah, which is, you know, it, it, it's, it's unfortunate that Samsung can't compete with Apple's retail presence in that in that way. Yeah. Uh, then we have, uh, we're moving on I think this is when we were talking about the uh, watches. Mm -hmm. uh, Sir Holmes said, uh, Android watches look cheap because they're trying to make them look like real watches. Apple watches are not trying to look like watches. They are an electronic device. Disagree. I think that there's, I, th I think there might be some um, credence to that. I think there's, a a, there's definitely like some uh, like actual justice in that assessment, right? Like I think that, that seems correct. Apple doesn't care to market the Apple Watch as a timepiece so much as it is like, yeah, this this companion device on you at all times. Even though when you look at all the res reports that they cite of like how many, how they're the best selling smartwatch around, they will compare themselves to other more traditional watchmaker types. So it, it's fascinating to see where they're framing themselves. Whereas yes, like other companies with the round faces like Samsung or like Fossils, various different brands, they do tend to stick to that round circular face thing. But as but I- the round, one, Go so ahead. The shape is the only thing that they have in common. Like the, Fossil's a great example. You've got mm -hmm. Skagen and Diesel and yeah. all their other house and brands. And Corio Armani, yeah. Right, and they all look different. And some of them look really good and some of them look bad. And then you have yep. like, outside of that, you have Mont Blanc, you have Citizen, you have Tag, you have Olvado. all these, yeah. it, it, like there's all kinds of different versions of a round watch and some mm -hmm. of them really do look as good as mechanical watches so i don't think that like i i, I don't I, I don't agree with that i think it's too general a sentiment yeah okay. i'm, I'm kind of with you I, I think it's a more personal preference thing um and Absolutely. i prefer a round watch i think it, maybe it's just like the traditionalist in me but i think a round watch looks better on your wrist it just yep. seems like it's you know it fits better um and then you know I'm not. I'm still not sold on like the the squircle shaped uh, Apple Watch design. Um, I think I almost wish they w did harder edges, like cleaner edges on on the Apple Watch, and I think it would like make it stand out a little bit more. And you know, they kind of did that um, a couple generations ago, um, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I, I I was gonna say that like all the conversation we've had today just reinforces the fact that when it comes to things like wearables, personal taste is just so varied across the lineup. Like it's so subjective. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I generally, yeah, I don't give a shit whether the, honestly, I've worn the Apple watch for a lot now, like maybe a year and a half now. And I, I, I really have grown so used to the squircle. I don't care anymore. I like the round <laughs> face a lot. I've always been a traditionalist because I grew up wearing watches. My mom would buy me a watch and I would wear it for years and years. The only real good thing about a round face right now is that Samsung's watches make good use of that shape with the bezel navigation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't know. I think it boils down to like how they manufacture these things. And that's truly all there is, like that there's a real difference functionally. Okay. And then we have um, a connected idea, not from the chat, but uh, just something that came up while we were talking about that. And... I think I have a feeling that Mr. Fisher is going to have some strong feelings about this. Uh -oh. um, there was a tweet that gets stuck in my mind from a couple of years ago. I actually pulled it up. Um, it says, please take off your Apple Watch if you are wearing uh, a dress or formal attire. You look like a spy kid. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about that? 
because um, our wearables are going to be like more and more uh, like integrated into fashion. But also I have seen like wedding photos of, you know, people with, you know, bow ties, really nice dress. And then, yeah, the Apple Watch kind of does just stick out somehow. I wonder what everybody else thinks about that. I'm, I'm I don't care. That. Go ahead. I think that people who like, there are a lot of people who will show up to the Met Gala with the Apple Watch on and they probably just swap out the strap for like the Milanese loop, the whatever Louis Vuitton, extremely expensive version. I don't think it was LV. I think it was something more like Hermes. I think it was there was an Hermes uh, strap. Mm -hmm. But like you're, you know, the fact that these luxury design brands are making straps for the Apple Watch should tell us that they, they kind of at least think some you know, fashionista types are going to want to use the Apple Watch. So, I think that's right, Sam. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Say no, 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 go, go ahead. I'll, I'll go after you. I think, I think this is a byproduct of the same thing that dr has driven the Apple Watch to such success. It mm -hmm. is not just uh, the best smartwatch because it is. It's the best smartwatch. Um, it is also a status symbol. I was thinking exactly that when you said those words. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like it's it's weird to like call out the app. If you're gonna say that about like say the, the Galaxy Watch, I think that that might actually hold more more water. Even though that is a device I personally prefer, I think yeah, a Galaxy Watch with a nice tuxedo might be might be a little bit weird. Whereas an Apple Watch, everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, you're in the club. Cool, another blue bubble. He's I'm glad he's doing well. You know, <laughs> and especially when they had those old gold plated Apple Watches, like that was like a real thing. It's like yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think I have a kind of slightly different twist because I think now no one, no one, like there's no need to like, you have to feel like you need to go buy a smartwatch, but to me, uh, smartwatches sort of feel like uh, the default option. If you want to wear a smartwatch, um, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are, you know, a capital F fashion and you want to be like really stylish and you're going to like a fancy party. Yeah, sure. Maybe it's time to switch out that Apple watch for something that, you know, complements your style or your outfit a little bit more and that's when you can go it's like oh let me pull out my omega or let me pull out my rolex and then yeah that's a uh, look obviously a classically great compliment to a suit um not i don't know as much about women's uh, watches but like you know obviously there's a lot of choices for fancy watches you know for for women and 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 so there's nothing I, basically what i'm saying is there's nothing wrong with wearing a smart watch with whatever outfit you want but if you really want to be stylish, you could put in that extra effort in the same way that you, you know, you don't wear sneakers to a wedding or maybe not, but you know, mm -hmm. like you, or, you know, you want to do your hair extra nice or, you know, do a manicure. It's, it's just that little bit of extra effort that you do to pull off an outfit or a style. Yeah, that makes sense. Wilso said, oh, another blue bubble. Glad he's doing well is my new favorite line. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. A couple boy. more uh, things from the chat. Dennis Perez said, Mr. Mobile is a pithy guest. I have to admit Ooh. that when I first Ooh. read this, I said shitty. I was like, oh, wait, maybe I should ban this person. <laughs> no, pithy, pith, pithy. as in... As Pithy. in, like, sparkling thoughts. wit and, and like, oh. interesting thoughts. I, I don't think I've ever been called pithy. I love, thank you so much. <laughs> pithy you. I pithy uh, you. Oh. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> then Concise we've got Mike... and forcefully expressive. I'll take it. Yes. Then we've got Mike Jones Jr. that says, I would still rather have two screens with a small be bezel than a one fragile, expensive, foldable screen. That makes sense. It and will always next... be... There will always be seven Service Duo fans in the chat. Good to yeah, I'm, 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 I'm one well. of them. We were talking about this yesterday. Um, <laughs> dozens I, I really, of us. Dozens. <laughs> I really want to see that line continue. I am fearful that I'm not sure the market exists to fund the, the continued development of that line. And so who knows what's going to happen to that thing. Great. I, oh, we could have a whole nother podcast talking about this because I think the duo. We is just start our own podcast. Listen, let's start our own podcast. All right. Let's pot it up. Hey, 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 hey. No mutiny. No <laughs> mutiny on the Engadget branded stream. Where's anyway, we've got one handle? last question from Mech Arena Tournament King. Yo, Mr. Mobile, what headphones are you using? Damn. These are the. Thank you. I was. I was sad no one was noticing. Uh, okay. These are the the Meza 99 Classics. Um, it, it, Meza is a brand from, I believe, Romania. I may have gotten that wrong. I reviewed these like five years ago. They're wonderful. They're made of wood, um, and they have gold accents. And I think that's real gold. Um, they're they're really fun. I just they just never asked for the review sample back, and I said that's just fine. <laughs> <Thank you>. Neato. <laughs> 
Uh, quick shout out to Kolele Similane, who was here yesterday as well. Said, don't forget the cats. Yeah, I forget that. Of all the celebrities they showed, there were also cats and dogs at Samsung's Unpacked. Sir Holmes said, uh, Apple doesn't even do celebrities. They are serious. Cool. Uh, <laughs> That's not necessarily true. Like, they will have uh, people. It's just that they don't call them out in such a big way. I actually saw Chris Angelo Perez in the chat, and Chris Angelo Perez was the one who uh, noticed a few Apple events ago that there was a person like making music in a garage in like you know some vignette, and it was actually A. G. Cook, um, this person who's like very well known for you know starting hyperpop, helping um, uh, Charlie X C X with production, helping um, like establish Sophie, the like really popular hyper pop producer who is dearly departed now. But uh, it's not like they won't use celebrities. It's just that maybe they won't use them in the way that like a Samsung would. Mm. I also want to shout out that AXBX goes, where is the plant? This is in reference to yesterday's stream where uh, regular Engadget viewer Mark Dell uh, was, was suspected of being a, an Engadget plant. We do not have plant members in the audience. If they do, we will shout them out. Usually their names are Matt Smith, Michael Morris, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, but no, Ms. Mark Dell just happens to be a familiar name that we see all the time. A chat and if you come hero. Back if you come back all the time, we will see your name and we will shout it out too. Like AXBX, I recognize it. Dude named Charlie, we recognize your name too. But 69mega.com, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you too could be a chat hero. All you need to do is show up. It's nice if you contribute. I mean, like the reason people might think that Mark Dell is a plant is just because he sends emails to podcast.engadget.com. You know what? You too can send emails to podcast.engadget.com. So oh. I think we might need to get to we do. Yeah. Uh, our other news. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about. So, Mr. Mobile, Mr. thank Mobile you out. so much for wow. sticking around. Yes, thank you so much. No, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Everybody but Sherlyn, this was a great time. <laughs> 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 I will Ugh. look forward to the next time, and I'll, I'll try and figure out what, what are you supposed to do between each Engadget Mobile podcast? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait in silence? <laughs> Listen to the morning again. after. Yeah, no, you're never coming back again, Mr. Mobile. This Sounds good. Part. Well, this was a great way to go out. <laughs> Thank uh, you, you so much, your, sir. You know where to send your recording. Uh, you can no, I don't know anything. You didn't brief me. This is true. I didn't know. <laughs> Uh, I will I will link you out. I'll tell you how to send it after this. I'll, I'll just like, yeah, export it as a WAV file, 16-bit. 16 blah, blah, blah. bit any any bit rate you want 44, uh, like 24. 24 oh 24 bit rate sorry and then there's the 44 100 hertz thing that we yeah yeah that that's uses. the sample rate i got it yeah okay sorry, yeah. and then yeah 24. okay cool thank you thanks guys oh uh and while we're transitioning i want to say uh, in chat tony d asks uh i hope the cracks in the projector does not affect my trade in value once i get it uh tony d i have some good news for you um so my last uh, Galaxy Z Fold 2, when I traded in, had a bunch of bubbles and the screen protector wasn't in, was in pretty bad shape. That did not affect the trade-in value. Um, so as long as the rest of your device is in like good condition, like obviously the, like the main screen or the outside screen's not cracked and what that, it should not affect your trade-in value. But don't don't get mad at me if Samsung pulls some stuff. But it didn't affect me, so I hope it doesn't affect you. Okay, so let's just go straight in on other news because uh... you're welcome to hang out if you want, Fisher. Uh, <laughs> I see you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm still here. <laughs> do, he, do, doing the John, John Travolta meme uh, for, for the audience. Uh, thank you for reminding me because I kind of forgot the camera was on, but I just was enjoying listening to the podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll transition to that while I wrap this up. Yeah, yeah. you're an actual fan. You're going to leave it on now. Oh, uh, oh. our favorite, uh, one of our favorite uh, YouTube live chat viewer name type people is here. Uh, you might get a kick out of this person's name. Their username is I can poop twice a day. Yay. Yes, I can poop twice a day. No, they never show up. Like they're, they've, they've all you have to do while, is have a back. funny name or yeah. interact with us, send us some emails, something like that. Just say hi. You know, it but, was. Yeah. It was it was really fun to hang around, but now now I'm really leaving. Yeah, <laughs> no, we need to post you some Pedialyte. Yes. I'll buy you some bye, TP. Everybody. See ya. Okay, bye. Mr. Mobile is lonely, I guess. That's not true. Oh no. Oh no. Uh okay. We're gonna go on to other news and then I think we'll plow through the rest of the show and then come back and do it. Yeah, just plow through straight through the rest of the show. Um yeah. I would say uh 
I'm gonna strike through some of the things in other news because like, we've I think the thing that we said we were gonna enough. cut. Yeah. Yeah, we can just cut this. Oh, oops. Oh, my watch just went to low battery mode, the watch five. Uh so that's about 20 something hours battery. Was it charged fully? Uh or do you just take it out of the box? Out of the box. So maybe okay. closer to like 80 something, 90%. Yep. Um, but anyway, okay, let's uh all right. Ready, Ben? Yeah, let's go. Okay. So let's move on to some other news that happened this week. Uh, something that had a lot of people excited, at least on Twitter, was the iOS 16 beta appears to bring back the battery percentage icon. Sam, you're not an iPhone user. Is that correct to say? Uh, I, I mean, use them for testing purposes, for comparison yeah. purposes, but no, it's not my full-time phone. So I, I mean, I have to do it for work too, like you, like, like you do. And uh, I have one of the things, yes, when I compare Android to, to iOS, I do think that the battery percentage number that I can enable on Androids is just so much more helpful. I get an idea of when like my phone or how much juice it really has. Although I haven't really missed an actual number on the iPhone, right? Like it's not there, but it is coming back, right? The fifth iOS 16 developer beta adds a few changes, but also the uh, battery percentage number. And uh, like I said, we said the internet had a big reaction and the big reaction was mainly that everyone thought the implementation was ugly. It was Uggs to the ugly. Um, first of all, the icon was removed in 2017, just FYI, because that's when Apple introduced the iPhone 10 and that was the first phone with that big gigantic notch. So it was- So very... they had to save a little space and apparently exactly. that meant cutting the, the number indicator? Exactly. So now they're bringing it back because I guess the notch is a little bit smaller on the iPhone 13. So that might have helped them with bringing it back. Although I don't know how it will work on the iPhone 10 that has still the same size notch, but we'll see. Uh, on the developer beta, if you're enrolled, you can use this now. If you go into the settings menu under the battery section, you can turn on the toggle that says battery percentage um, and it'll change colors based on how much you know juice is left on your phone. Uh, this, it's not available on the iPhone 10R, 11, 12, and 13 mini. So I, it looks like something that is, you know, subjective and well, at least tied to the size of your notch. Sam, have you seen the pictures of this battery percentage indicator yet? Yeah, and it, I, I don't think it looks that great. I know, and I think that's like what kind of the big hubbub is that like there's this like half the people just think it's whatever and they don't care. And these probably, you know, that's fine. I think they just like don't care about the changes in general. Um, yeah. But to me, like, especially from Apple for a company that really prides itself on design and polish yeah. and all that, I yeah. just think it kind of looks amateurish. The The numbers, it looks like a cartoon bubble font. And like, and it's also like not all that easy to read. And so like, you know, coming from the Android perspective, it's like, I love being able to see the batteries like, um, indicator on the lock screen because it's like mm -hmm. oh i just look at it i know how much battery i have and i, I don't have to think about it anymore and that's like you know when i switch over to iphone i'm looking at it i'm like i'm doing like some weird mental math and like the, the icon is already so tiny it's like hard to tell and then they added this and it's like well now i can tell it just doesn't look great and it yeah. looks out of place i think is the the, the big thing to me it looks like it was sort of awkwardly smashed into the battery uh, shape, and it, it looks like the font might be, excuse me, slightly too big for the for where it's trying to be placed. And I think that that's like a very delicate balance that Apple has to draw between like aesthetic, which would tend to be like maybe a thinner font face, but then actual usability, which means a bigger, thicker font for people to read from you know a distance, or if you have like certain visual impairments. You know, there definitely is stuff that Apple has to consider here. I do want to shout out that uh, Dan Seifert from The Verge uh, called the battery life icon big 2011 Android skin design energy. <laughs> it, it feels dated. Yeah, I, I think it's, that's pretty accurate. Old. Yeah, like more than 10 years ago. So uh, we, I, I think we don't really mind. And it seems like Apple might make changes to this given the widespread reception uh, to this. Uh, so before it actually launches on iOS 16, it's entirely possible the company makes changes. But until then, if you have thoughts on this iOS 16 beta battery percentage indicator and how it looks, send us your thoughts, podcastandengadget.com. Moving on, th another piece of news that got me kind of shook this week i was like well shook a little bit shook a okay bit shook. okay 
Uh, Beats and Kim Kardashian just released a line of skin colored Fit Pro earbuds. Uh, so basically, there's, these are like Beats's you know, wireless, truly wireless earbuds. And normally wireless earbuds are like white, black, blue, red, whatever. This time around, if you're familiar with Kim Kardashian's like line of shapewear at all, it's it, or I guess her cosmetics or whatever, um, they come in similar colors. These are neutral tones. They're flesh colored is what some people would call them. The, the, the thing that's problematic here is that there are only three shades available uh, called moon, dune, and earth. And according to like the press release accompanying the, the announcement, uh, apparently Karda- Kim Kardashian said, uh, this will help you either blend in or stand out. I don't even, how does that work? <laughs> you either blend in or stand out. Like what, a, how do you, yeah, it's not both. Uh, Sam, did you so, see these things? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen them. And I think, so I, I think the general idea behind it is good because like, I think, you know, for some people, like they're really into gadgets and they want to show them off and they want mm. people to, like, they want, they want to talk about them. And like, you know, when you have conversations about it and then other people, they want their tech to fade into the background. So I think the idea of having, you know, uh, gadgets, especially earbuds that are like on you and like, they're kind of part of your like profile or your mm. face. Like, I think it's really cool to have something that blends in. It's more innocuous. You know, you don't, Mm -hmm. it just kind of fades into the background and you don't, it's not becoming like a topic of conversation. But like you said, I think three skin tones or Mm -hmm. three shades just is not enough. And it seems like the the weird part is like, it seems like she should know that because like you you said, they have that makeup line. Um, I can't remember if it's Kendall or Kylie. It's like her makeup line, like one of the biggest selling points of that originally was like, they had expanded support for more skin tones and colors for people with darker skin. And so Mm -hmm. it's like weird that they don't have the same level of support for, you know, something that should have it, I guess. I mean, like to, to that point, right? If you look at the marketing images that, that Beats and Kim Kardashian release, the version that she's wearing, I'm not sure exactly which color, does seem to blend in immaculately with her ear. Of course, I mean, they they, 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 they tuned it just for her and it yeah. looks great and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And but, like, you I know. guess, you know, she's three different skin tones, through, you know, depending on the time of year. So maybe that's why they made three <laughs> different <laughs> colors of this. But listen, Rihanna did not launch Fenty and its inclusive range of shades for this to still be happening in the year 2022. I mean, again, like you said, right? Yes, Kylie has her line of skincare. Kim Kardashian has her own skincare and cosmetics line as well. KKW Beauty, I believe, has its own like fairly wide range of shades. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is just, it's just wild. Maybe it's a manufacturing issue, but the fact that they left this out was just yeah. I, I just feel like if you if you're gonna say we want to support skin tones and a wide range of skin tones for every people for every mm-hmm. person, you, you you have to back it up. And three mm-hmm. three choices of colors is just not enough. Well, if, if, in case you're like exactly Kim Kardashian's skin tone and you want to buy this, they cost the same price as the standard Beats Fit Pro. That's two hundred dollars uh, in the U.S., U.K., Canada, France, Germany, and Japan. Uh, they'll retail on August seventeenth, so just under a week from now. And if you want to buy them in person, they are barely limited to ten. 10- Apple stores around the world, including Fifth Avenue in New York, Regent Street, I'm assuming in London, and the Champs Elysees um, in Paris, as well as several different like retail department stores. But they are going to be somewhat limited. So, you know, if that's your thing, that's your thing, and you can buy them. Uh, speaking of really quick, I just want to shout out that uh, this week we also saw Urbanista unveil. ANC earbuds, which is active noise canceling earbuds that have a light powered charging case. So, you know. Different option for charging. I guess more green energy is good. Sam, you wanted to tell us a little bit about Rivian doing something? Yeah, so we got some electric car news. Um, so the first is Rivian is testing out a dual motor version of the R1S and the R1T. That's the truck and the SUV version of their car. And, you know, theoretically, you know, we haven't, there's nothing concrete yet, but that should lower the price of a Rivian. Um, you know, that said, I think up to date, I think they've, Rivian sold maybe 10,000 vehicles. Yeah. So, it's nice that there's going to be a more affordable option, but at the same time, Rivian needs to really ramp up production in general, just so people can buy these things and they can deliver them. But I think it's really cool because, you know, not everyone needs four motors on a truck because, you know, you're not all, uh, you know, off-roading all the time. So a dual motion uh, motor version is really nice. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'd like to see it. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, I think 
one of the big barriers of entry in general for electric cars is the price. So anything that you can get it closer to more affordable to that, you know, average uh, car price, which I think is around 35 to $40,000 and, you know, Rivians start at, I think uh, around 70. So anything to bring that price down a little bit uh, should be a good thing. I, I mean, Rivian's been kind of troubled lately, right? I mean, they had, there's a lot of hype surrounding them and then now they seem to finally be pushing out their vehicles to the general public. Uh, yep. And they, they've had to re revise like production forecasts uh, a number of times, both up and down. And so, you know, hopefully they can, you know, hit their stride and, you know, get actually some more vehicles on the road. I mean, Tesla had that similar issue uh, a while ago too. So I'm, I'm not surprised. It seems like something that a lot of EV companies uh, have to deal with. Uh, there was some other Ford related news, right? Yes. Uh, and so thank you for the segue. And so for a long time, you know, Ford uh, got into the, the EV game with the, the Mustang Mach-E and then they mm -hmm. came out with the Ford F-150 Lightning. And it was so popular that they had to shut down reservations yeah. for a while. So you couldn't even order one. Um, and I think the waiting list is like six months out or even longer. But now um, Ford is reopening reservations. The downside is that uh, they're bumping up the prices between $4,200 and $8,900, uh, $8, depending on the trim level. Uh, trim oh, wow. level. And so Ford uh, claims that it's uh, citing significant material cost increases and other factors for the adjustment. Um, so it's a little disappointing. That said, like the car market recently has been so yeah. like out of whack that, yeah. you know, you would go to a dealer and they'd be like adding a $10,000 like uh, dealer uh, sticker ad uh, price. To, uh, and, and so you are already getting marked up big. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, if we have these things and they bump up the price, maybe they can kind of cut out those dealer uh, uh, price increases. And then maybe, you know, we have something, at least you know what the price of the vehicle costs and you don't have to like haggle or worry about some, you know, weird uh, sticker Middleman. shock. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, these, to be clear, the Ford F-150, what, Lightning, these are more like trucks than they are like sedans. Yeah, so th this, is, this is the EV version of their uh, F-150 truck, which is like, mm -hmm. has been wildly popular. It's like one of the been, my, I think it's the best selling car over like the last 20 or 30 years. Um, and so, you know, the base F-150 Lightning is now going to start um, at $4,600. So, so that's the base version, and it's up $7,000 over the previous model. So that is kind of a hefty increase. Mm. Um, and then the mid-range is going to start at Did around 15... 46000 rather sorry, than yes. 4600 Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. The, the ba uh, so the base F-150 Lightning is now going to start at 46000 which is up $7,000 from the previous base model. The mid-range is going to start at around $59,000, mm. uh, which is an increase of about $6,500. And then uh, the top of the line, the Platinum Extended Range, is going to jump up by uh, $4,000 to just under one hundred k. Okay. Well, I'm not a driver, so, you know. This is this is interesting to watch from afar for me. Uh, well, well, we're up. gonna have to we're gonna have to ask Ford to get one so you can learn how to drive in like a big oh. truck. If you can drive oh. a big truck, you can drive anything. I'm a, I I I am kind of down for that idea, but we, we'll talk offline to figure <laughs> that out. No, we got uh, we got to do this on camera. We got every, everyone's got to see this. <laughs> There's already some great footage of me struggling to drive a car. Um, Speaking of struggling, Google Stadia. Hey, hey, remember last week we talked about Stadia being actually alive and not dead? Um, just kind of to, I guess, prove that it's very much alive, um, Google is getting ready to unveil a, a new party stream feature. This was first reported by XDA developers. Um, it will let players privately broadcast their gameplay to up to nine other users and your other friends can play or along with you uh, instead of just watch. So that's pretty fun. And then you get some party chat features during these streams, like emoji and voice reactions. So uh, pretty interesting. And not a lot really that I want to talk about this feature because it seems pretty straightforward. I just thought it was funny that like we were all speculating whether Stadia is dead last week. And here we are with like new features are coming. And I'm still not sure this is really going to move the needle in terms of like people trying to decide between Xbox Cloud Gaming, like NVIDIA GeForce Now and Stadia. Exactly. I think the bigger issue is like, you know, library and content and, and just even marketing to a certain extent, because yeah. I feel like, you know, you see, you know, Xbox constantly pushes Game Pass, which includes support for, you know, cloud gaming. And mm -hmm. NVIDIA is like, you know, obviously well known on the PC gaming land site. And then like Google Stadia is kind of off in their own corner doing their own thing. And it's like, Okay, this new feature is nice, but it you know, are you going to subscribe to Stadia now? Yeah. Uh, not so sure. 
I yeah, I I don't know. I would for just this one new feature either. So anyway, we will keep an eye on Stadia. Obviously, uh, we have great gaming uh, reporters that will bring you all the best news. Speaking of people on the team working, hey, this week. I'm going to be working on Samsung reviews. Uh, I will be accepting all of your questions about Samsung's devices that I have, like the Flip 4 and the Galaxy Watch 5s. Send me your questions uh, as I review these things on Twitter at Sherlyn Lowe, or I guess wherever else you can reach me. Uh, Sam, what are you working on other than the Fold 4? Oh, so surprise, surprise. Yeah, working on the Z Fold <laughs> right? 4 is like the main thing. Yeah. Um, you know, still got a couple other things I can't quite talk about yet. Um, you know, stay tuned for a, a new hands-on video of mm. something else from Samsung that's not a phone um, on Monday. Um, and, you know, kind of working through, you know, all the unpack stuff. Um, that's like, we're, we, we, it's like full unpack season. It'll be full Samsung season from now until at least next week. So I, uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, so when we're, when we finally get a chance to breathe again, I guess, or you know, before we went into Samsung Madness. Uh, what have you been watching, Sam? Oh, you're going you're to spring this on me first. Okay. Yeah, let's so, first. you know, we, we, we were talking about Umbrella Academy, but I think the thing that I really want to dive into this weekend is Prey. I've, mm. I've, this is one of the movies, like, I've heard, like, universal praise for. Um, I think, you know, our, our Ben mentioned that it's one of the few or if maybe only movies that has subtitles in Comanche, which is like, that, and that's because the cast is a uh, majority Native American. So I think it's gonna be, and everyone says the movie's great and it's got that, you know, awesome representation and they're, they're kind of just really supporting the movie kind of all around um, in, in a way that I think should be really good. And I'm uh, being told that I was wrong about the Comanche, but that's, uh, so my apologies on that one. Oh, okay. Well, I, yeah, I will have to give Prey a shot. I haven't seen it. I've heard good things about it. Uh, my, I, my pick this week is something I've been very hype about, which is the Sandman on Netflix. Holy crap. I got the alerts. I got everything. Like I knew it was coming and I started watching it maybe like the day it was released. It's been a while since I watched a show on Netflix and like couldn't take my eyes off. Like I just was sucked into the story. I was like, whoa, something really interesting is happening here. So in case you're not aware, The Sandman on Netflix is the latest adaptation of Neil Gaiman's uh, comic series, graphic novel. Don't really know the right word here for that, but basically like an illustrated fiction story about this anthropomorphic character called Dream. Um, <laughs> anthropomorphic he's like I, he's a god okay so just, yeah, we, we, we've both been watching this yeah go yeah. ahead sorry uh, no, no no you would explain the story better than I would go ahead yeah so I mean we've both been watching it and yes. I think we both really really like it yeah. and so this is it's this is Neil Gaiman kind of doing his twist on like you know reimagining the deity so dream is the he's the dream of gods he and he has like the siblings and yes. his siblings are like destined destiny and um desire uh, desire death uh, i think is one of them yes and yeah. so you know the kind of premise is that you know we have this god and then in the first episode he gets in inadvertently captured by this amateur magi magician and he sort of loses his powers um to a certain extent and so this is all about kind of him trying to figure out in some ways who he is and then also regain his powers in a way that you know he can rebuild his kingdom because you know, his kingdom was founded on dreams, but, you know, because he was captured, Away. he wasn't able to maintain his his kingdom and he wasn't able to maintain his like servants and help them out in a way that was, you know, a little sad. And, you know, you'll you'll see what happens in the show, but it's been great so far. Like, you know, what, what do you think about, you know, this kind of topic? I, I, I love how kind of whimsical this story has been and it's a surprisingly whimsical by like i was mm -hmm. expecting it to be darker and more suspenseful uh but it actually goes in a lot of different directions i'm a little further along the show than you are we talked about this uh before yep. this episode um i am on episode nine right now and every episode has a different direction i mean there's like an overarching plot of course but dream goes on adventures and and you know we, we get to see deeper into the relationships he has with different characters, like his sister, Death, for example. And Death is played by um, Good Place actor, I forget their name, Baptist, Kirby, lots of combinations of words that I can't remember all right now, and I don't want to do her a disservice of pronouncing it wrong. So uh, great, great performance by a lot of the actors here. And 
I, I have been really enjoying. Also, the um, there was an article, I think it was on Vogue or Vanity Fair or something like that, that was like, oh, the return of the emo leading man. Uh, not I was like, you were, you were very excited about this leading man, uh, if I may say so. You, you may, but I'm just like, I wasn't <laughs> expecting to be into the leading man. I was just like, huh. There's something about this whole like sadness that Dream has got going on, right? Because mm-hmm. of, of all the the sibling deities that Dream has, you think about desire, despair, death. These are all kind of depressing. Whereas Dream could be either way. Dream could be a nightmare or hopeful. And watching him figure out what direction he should be is is truly has been very interesting. So I I like that sort of stuff. Sam, you excited to watch till episode nine, right? Oh, very. Um, and, and it's like, it, like, like kind of like what you said. Like, I'm, I'm, I think I'm four or five episodes in, and you kind of see, like, you know, he, he starts out really brooding, and then you kind of see, you know, his his kind of personality and his like, you know, emotions start to yeah. change a little bit. And so it's really interesting to see that, you know, happen on his journey. And then all on top of that, as he's like, you know, being, you know, visiting his other siblings and yeah. some of the other deities, I think it's just really interesting to see, like. Oh, oh, now we're going down to hell. And it's like, yeah. oh, that's that's a whole new thing. Yeah. The world building is also, and my one of my favorite things about these types of shows is the world building. And they do a pretty good job with it here. I also want to shout out that the that Dream's voice is just deep, very, very deep, <laughs> exactly how you ex- expect it to be if you like read the graphic novel, which I didn't, and I can't compare the it's very the brooding. Pieces. Yeah, but it's definitely very brooding, very Edgar Allan Poe almost. So Hey, check it out. Clearly, both Sam and I like it, and I wouldn't be surprised if when Devendra comes back, he's going to want to talk about Salmon as well. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. Okay. Oh, was that okay? Yeah? All right. Outro time. Well, that's it for the episode this week, everyone. Thank you, as always, for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. This podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Sam online at at Sam Rutherford on Twitter and of course on Engadget.com. Uh, you can send me your thoughts about the iOS 16 beta in battery indicator, I guess, and any cute animals as always. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Sherlyn though. Email us your thoughts at podcast at Engadget.com. Leave us a review, please, on iTunes and subscribe on anything that gets podcasts. Okay. All right, we have some time for Q&A before we got to bounce. Yeah, just a little bit of time for Q&A, though. We got stuff to do. Uh, shouting out all the people that are in support of the Sherlyn Learns to Drive a Vehicle. <laughs> Uh-oh, oh, you're like motorcycle. setting yourself up for a series I'm not sure you want to get into. I'm all right. I'm cool. I love, actually okay. love uh, motorbikes, yeah. Um, it was mostly D-Man. D-Man is imagining uh, get out of Cher's way, Samsung hands-on event in Midtown in 20 minutes, uh, blasting uh, massive truck horn. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I can poop twice a day. It was like, you can just imagine me drawing. You don't, you don't have to imagine it. I'll post a video of me completely failing. Uh, Will So was like, I want to see Cher driving a big truck blaring 100 GECs. Oh, that? 100 Gex. Gex? What's Gex? Uh, it's a band. Oh, oh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you you want to you want to be a guest on Top Gear? I mean, <laughs> I would love to meet Dax Shepard. I know that that's not the like Top Gear that everyone loves, but yeah, no, that's that's American Top Gear. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, Dax uh, I think is... I think cool. uh, Sherlyn would probably be the absolute slowest star in a reasonably priced car. No, oh, I, I I would I wish we could do that. I would, it's, would if someone's got some like star public uh, publicist, uh, let us know so we can make that happen. Oh my god, um, Ken Sai or Ken C, I don't really know how to pronounce the S Y. Uh, says Bixby smart host speaker question mark question mark question mark laughing with tears emoji. Excuse me, but that is a dead dream. I I don't think they've mentioned Bixby in Sansom Unpacked for at least yeah. two years. Which is surprising because when I long pressed the power button on the Z Flip 4, Bixby still showed up. So, uh, AXBX says, I'm riding a motorcycle. Yes, I can. I can try that. Yes. What now- is like the personal mobility situation in Singapore? What do you mean by like, personal or mo- Or more people into like scooters and motorbikes or more people into cars? More, I think, weirdly enough, more cars. There's a lot of motorcycles, people. We don't have a, a lot of scooters. 
Yeah, uh, we don't have as many like bicycle types as as some other countries, like I think China and Thailand seem to have more of those. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we we are more like car people, even though, and this is really dumb. Our government taxes more money on cars than other vehicles. You have to buy a certificate of entitlement. It's you can get way into that. But yeah, no, everyone buys cars. So is having a car like a flex? Does everybody? No, it's to, not a flex because everybody... everyone has one. It's just okay. it's just really it's just more a lot more expensive than it would be here Anywhere just else. because yeah. yeah you have to have a permit just to buy the car. Exactly. Oh, Mark Dell is here. Hi, Mark. <laughs> yeah, all the way at the end. <laughs> you were accused of being a plant again today, and AXBX was like, "Is the plant here? No, you're here now, and you're not a plant." Um, but back to that that car conversation really really quickly. I think that most people in Singapore don't go for motorcycles because it's seen as unsafe. I think mm. that's a bit concern of of like societies like ours. Uh, Rolando Martinez Jr. asks, by the way, how is the ecosystem on the Galaxy Watch 5? But by ecosystem, do you mean like apps uh, and third-party app availability? Because uh, it, it's pretty good. I mean, like the, the promise, and I haven't tested this out yet because it's been only 24 hours, less than that, is that like any app you download, if they have a counterpart on Wear OS, they will automatically download to the watch. I have not seen that happen yet. I have already installed Telegram and stuff. I still have to manually go in and turn on notifications for each of them. So we'll see, but I'll come back to this um, in a bit. Uh, Gonzalo Costa asks, any problems to report with the Pixel Buds so far? I don't know. We said we weren't going to talk about them for the rest of the stream. But No, the Buds, joke. Pixel Buds Pro is a- Oh, Pixel Buds. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the man. the- no, no real problems other than like, I, I mean, I haven't tested like audio switching between devices still. So you're going to want to be careful if that's something you are buying them for. The quality is still great. The touch controls are still good. The problems with the Pixel Buds in general for me don't usually show up until at least three months in. So mm. that's when it's a good time to check back in with me. How's the battery life been for you? Because I know that was one of the criticisms of the original Pixel Buds. They had yeah. five and a half hours of battery life. They've been fine. I, I use them for like when I walk to the gym and back and like when I'm out and about, I haven't really used them for as long as like, let's say a plane, right? Okay. Yet. Yep. Uh, so I can't really tell you at, at most I've used them for like an hour at a time and they've lasted that long for sure. Okay. Uh, what about like live translation? Remember live translation and they like were pushing really hard on the, with the pixel buds. Uh, I don't think that is, feature has there been yet. Oh, okay. It's not even live yet. All right. I don't think so, but that's a question for Billy. We should get Billy on to talk about uh, audio very soon. Um, I can poop twice a day. He says, uh, do you think One UI Wear OS has improved since launch? Honestly, it's looking more and more like Wear OS and less and less like Tizen. And I don't know if you want to say that's a good thing or bad. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. And I don't think there has been a ton of changes in general since launch. There was like the initial changes when they switched over to uh, Wear OS, but they haven't they haven't been making a ton of like iterative changes since then. From you know, like from my experience. Yeah. Um, uh, Mark Dell says that you he hopes the buds to hurt less than the last generation. Agree fully, and they actually again based on my like brief testing yes they are already significantly smaller than the last generation and hurt less um the can can sigh or see please let me know how to pronounce that correctly um says hi please do a latency test response with the virtual bezel of the samsung watches please tell me what you mean by latency test do you mean like whether there's a lag between me dragging because there's no no actual Ooh. Ooh. It's difficult to demo right now. I will try to do it on the review video when we do, but let me let me know exactly what you mean. Um, and then why has a very good question, real question. Why does Samsung use the Galaxy name? Why not just Fold 4 or something like that? Galaxy sounds dated. Do you agree, Sam? Um, I don't, um, not necessarily. I think Galaxy is just like, that's their flagship branding for all their flagship phones. Um, I don't, but I mean, I think I will fully admit that like, maybe I just hear it so much that I don't even mm -hmm. think about the galaxy name being a thing anymore. Because yeah. to me, like, like kind of like you said, like I just think about the new phone, it's the fold four, it's the flip four. I don't say galaxy unless like, you know, I'm doing it in writing on first mention or something like that. And yep. then, you know, yep. that that's kind of, kind of where I'm at. Um, and I think, you know, when you hear to me, the, the more important thing is like, it's the fold, it's, it's the foldable phone and they, they get that across very clearly. So I don't, I don't have an issue with it, but I do see what you're saying. 
I agree. I, uh, very often, like you said, I just mentioned it once and then drop it forever. Like I keep calling it unpack now. I don't even care about the word galaxy. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, couple questions. Uh, <laughs> I can move twice a day. Yeah, he said, I think removing galaxy is like removing the eye from iPhone. I mean, sure. Kind of, yeah. It's three more syllables. It's two more syllables. But yeah, I mean, it is a brand thing now that people get. So it seems like people yeah. are just like, this is a subjective thing. And I, I can poop twice a day. Also asked like if if the new like Wear OS uh, version of Samsung's uh, OS feels as smooth as Tizen. And I don't think it does. Um, Tizen was always really, really snappy. And I think that was one yeah. of the best things about Tizen. That's yeah. not, that's not to say like the new watches are slow, but I don't like, if you are like really nitpicking like responsiveness, I think it's, I think Google's watch OS is a little bit more sluggish compared to Tizen. Yeah. We're going to have to do a bit more like testing to see, uh, speaking of C it was, can C, <laughs> can C clarify to you pronounce S Y S C. Uh, then I, I saw Ben count the number of syllables. I and galaxy. Galaxy. Yes. yes. Galaxy is three syllables and I is one, right? So that's a two syllable difference. I think so. Um, Mark Dell rightly points out who has the time to say the word galaxy in this day and age. And Ken C <laughs> says the Samsung CEO calls it Galax, no E. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to pick on people for their pronunciation because you know people are not speaking their <laughs> native language. It's difficult. Let's not. Let's not judge them for that. Uh, and he, uh, D David Reynolds had a question. Uh, I will always have my phone with me. Is there a reason to get the Pro? I suspect you mean the Galaxy Watch Five Pro. It, the, this is a really like we're getting to a very philosophical question of do you want to buy a smartwatch? So I, I think David, you're going to need to be a bit more specific. So let us know. Also, I, I think there are people who really like just going on a run and they like having the ability to like, yes. if there's an emergency, I can make a call from my phone. And then that way they don't have to, you know, carry their phone, which is like, you know, if you're running long distances, you know, that added weight or, you know, that little like, like brick bouncing around on like your, you know, arm strap or in your pocket could be a little annoying. If you don't care, you know, if you like running with your phone, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't like running with the arm strap and the phone on it or like anywhere on me. So I am one of these people for whom yeah, leaving my phone at home would be amazing. And then another question related actually is whether the Galaxy Watch 5 comes with uh, Samsung Pay. I believe so, but let me double check. Uh, but in the meantime, y'all go ahead. Was there anything else you banked, uh, Ben? No. Okay, great. Julio is mentioning that the Spotify app doesn't work on the Apple Watch if your iPhone's not near you. That's a good yeah. point. Um, Thankfully, Samsung does uh, have a, like a partnership with Spotify, so you can play music locally on the watch. Um, so that's nice. Uh, maybe that's something Apple should look into. Hint, hint, maybe, I don't know. They could do something at their event later this fall. Yeah, I, I mean, I have found that I can use controls, but yes, definitely like the controlling of your music playback doesn't work if your the phone that is synced to your Apple Watch is like not near it. Um... And also someone in the chat pointed out, I, Sir Holmes said, I think Apple made the screen bigger on the Apple Watch because real apps are coming, like social media. Uh, how much do you want to see your Instagram feed on your Apple Watch screen? Yeah, I'm, I'm still not convinced that like people, that there are a lot, that the majority of people want to play like games on their phone or like, do you like, do you really want to like send a tweet from, I mean, send a tweet from your watch? Mm, I'm, I'm not so sure. I mean, it might be nice in a pinch, but like, I don't know. Doing that full time uh, seems like you're gonna get a terrible like crook in your neck, and you might as well just pull out your phone anyways. Imagine a uh, camera in your Apple Watch. No, because it's been no, done before. And it's it's terrible. LG did it once. There was it's that like similar. Apple. Did you ever did you ever view that add on for the Apple Watch that added a camera and it was huge and bulky yeah. and uh, it kind of made me laugh a lot. It was awful. I did not test it because we just knew it was awful. I was mm -hmm. going to say, how silly would it be if you had Be Real running on your <laughs> device and it took the front camera, the back camera, and the watch camera? And Sam, the watch do you know what Be Real is? Just, like, random. Mm -hmm. Sam. It, no. Be Real I, is maybe... this new, new social media app. Oh, like... right, right. Where it takes yeah. the, the, uses all your cameras at the same time. Yeah, the front and back, and then you do it once a day only. Um, but see, I, I don't get this because uh, yeah. the smartphones have been doing this for years. I like yeah. where 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 did this app come from? Who was asking for this? Remember, I, I can't remember. The was it Nokia? Came from France. Oh, I, okay, so, France. Yeah. That, that explains <laughs> some things. France is weird. Um, cool. But like, 
you remember Nokia came up with, it was either Nokia or Huawei, they came up with the stupid branding term Bofi. Do you remember this? Yes. Oh, God, oh, I God. hate that. Nokia did that too. Nokia yeah, did it, it, was, it was pictures. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was the most annoying thing. And I was like, yeah. please, don't, please don't name this. Don't try to make this a thing. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It is ridiculous. All right. I don't think there are any more actual questions in the chat. So I'm yeah, giving you all two minutes to out. say goodbye and, yeah, and, and, and I'm anything. I'm definitely getting tired too. Yeah. Uh, so thanks to everyone for joining us today. As always, the Buddy 305 Love, Mark Dell. I can poop twice a day. Yay. Welcome back. The letter Y, David, David Reynolds, Turbine, Mark. Did I say Mark Dell already? I said Mark Dell twice. Oh my gosh. Gotta, gotta you just like you're, you're really you're really spraying the conspiracy plan. theories. Yeah, I am. I am actually feeding feeding the trolls. Uh Christoph Howard, D Man. D -Man. AXVX. I do name Charlie was here early. Sir, Sir Holmes, Wilso, uh Ken Sai, Rolando Martinez Jr. Yes, we love to shout your names. We see CJ by steps, I think is a new regular. Mm -hmm. Uh I, I'm not gonna go too much higher. Uh Chris Moore, etc. Cornell. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate you as always. And shout out uh, Daniel Diaz. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, and thanks as always for our to our closed captioner who does a very difficult and thankless job of making sure people can read what we're saying. Um, ben, do you want to do your thing? Yes. So thank you for watching the Engadget live stream. It, the video uh, the video comes to you via our video team, which is Julio Briantos and Luke Brooks. If you've stuck around this long, you know that we live in a world of algorithms more than the average person. You know how important it is to rate us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, any other podcast platform with some kind of algorithm, algorithmic ranking system. Also, tell a couple friends, say maybe they should rate us on Apple podcasts google podcasts all that and we will see you next week bye thanks everyone